I stood in front of this shabby cottage. <sighs> trying to calm myself and went inside. One step in and the door snapped shut. I freaked out and banged on the door. Let me out, let me out. But only ghastly laughter resounded. Just then, I could feel someone coming close to me. I turned around and was terrified by what I saw. Hey, Clover here, the one that just got scared witless. I know, so embarrassing. Let me tell you how I got myself into that situation in the first place. But before I do, please like and subscribe. I used to have everything. I come from a family of esteemed cardiologists who's made numerous contributions to the medical field. And as the next generation of Howards, I took immense pride in continuing their legacy, which was getting a Harvard medical degree and becoming a doctor. That's why I always made sure my academic record was top notch. I went to this elite private school, aced every subject, and became the class president. Finally, winter dance prepping's finished, so I could sit back and watch this magical night come to life. Suddenly, my phone got a notice. It's an article about my parents and how they were involved in an operation that cost a patient's life. No way was this real. But when I looked up, everyone was giving me bombastic side eyes. Jeez, I should go to my parents now. I had to ask as soon as I found them. Mom, Dad, what the press is saying isn't true, right? Honey, listen. When the patient was brought in, there wasn't much we could do for her. It was too late. Turns out, she's from the Albert family, a very powerful family in the country. They didn't take it too well, especially her son. He blamed my parents for his mom's passing, meaning this media crisis was his doing. My parents explained to him many times, but to no avail. Now he even took legal actions against them. They had no choice but to show up in court. The incident quickly became the talk of the town. Everyone was throwing jibes at us. Gosh, all these turmoils were driving me insane. Clover, can you solve this equation? Clover? Clover! Stop! The whole room turned silent for a second and stared at me like I was some freak. I picked up my books and stormed right out of class, but still, whispers followed me everywhere I went. There was no other place for me to be, so I just ran home and wept tears of frustration. My parents came in all worried for me. They thought maybe it's best if I stayed at my aunt's place. But mom, dad, I can't just leave you here. You're not leaving us. It's just that things are messy right now, and we don't want you to be affected. Besides, it's just temporary. Once the lawsuit's over, we'll reunite. Promise? Promise. When I arrived at my aunt's house, she seemed annoyed. Your room's in the attic. You're just here temporarily, so do not make any fuss. It's bad enough your parents got slapped with a lawsuit. Just then, I got a text. Mom's checking in on me. I shouldn't worry her, right? But honestly... I'm not sure how I'd survive this place. First day of school, I had to ride this pile of junk here. Cycling alone made me sweat like a dog. Just then, a boy passed by and yelled at me. Hey, you got a fat side! Excuse me? I said, you got a flat tire! Oh, that explains a lot. He helped me fix it. A few minutes later, the bike was good to go. The guy's Percy. He went to the same school as me, and today was also his first day. So, we arrived at school together. As soon as we entered the hallway, everyone stared at us. Suddenly, two girls came dragging me aside. Who are you? Why are you with Percy? You're not his girlfriend, right? Jeez, I met him ten minutes ago. I don't even know who he is. OMG, you live under a rock or something? He's Percy Albert, the sole heir of the powerful Albert family. That name... Could it be a coincidence? The son that insisted on suing my parents went to the same school as me? Hold on, Clover. This could be your chance to manipulate him into withdrawing the lawsuit. And boom! Things could go back the way they were. Hmm. Let's see. I could make him fall for me. People would do anything for love, right? Lucky me, Percy and I were in the same biology class where we worked in pairs. The two girls from before, Holly and Jody, started fighting to be his lab partner. Meanwhile, he straight up asked me. Well, well, not a finger lifted and the prey was already in my trap. That night, I went on his social media account and found out he often golfed at Rolling Greens. I could be a caddy, just had to apply for the position. I got accepted in no time and quickly got used to the job. Oh, and I just happened to go through Percy's golfing schedule and totally did not plan this chance encounter. I parked the golf cart ready to seduce my Ken doll, but somehow standing in front of me was Holly and Jody. What took you so long? Do you know how hot it gets? At least I still got a chance with him on the field. But as soon as these blondies caught sight of Percy, they flew towards him like moths to a flame. 
So I was left to carry these human-sized bags. Ew, she's stinking with sweat. Social distance, please. Stop, you're being mean. Clover, let me help you with that. Thanks, you came to my rescue again. No worries. Say, I didn't know you worked here. Yeah, I'm pretty good at golf. By the way, for your 50-yard shot, you might want to use this club. Center yourself and give it a good backswing. Percy took my advice and caught a strike. Already? Hey, how would you like to be my personal caddy? Hmm, I don't know. Come on, help a guy out. Okay, on one condition. When the time's right, I'll use this card. When exactly? I'm so intrigued right now. <laughs> you just wait. From then on, we always stick together golfing and hiding from Holly and Jody. Hey, are you free this Saturday? Since you helped me out and everything, I, um, want to repay you. Yes, my plan worked. I was so happy I could jump up and scream. But that only happened inside my head. I still gotta play it cool. Only if it's a date. Saturday came and we took a trolley downtown to watch the streets in the fall. Look at how pretty the golden leaves are. We then stopped at this carnival. And I gotta admit, Percy seemed genuinely sweet. He protected me from the rushing crowd, held my hand when I was petrified on the Ferris wheel. His caring gestures had my heart racing a bit, and also wondered, how could this guy resent my parents that much? As the last ray of sunlight disappeared, the carnival lit up, and Percy's eyes suddenly looked so dreamy. Snap out of it, Clover! You're supposed to make him fall for you, not the other way around! The ride ended and I immediately went to get some refreshments to calm myself down. But holy cow, I couldn't find my wallet anywhere. What do I do? Excuse me, I'll pay for her. How much is it? Thank you so much. I owe you big time. No worries. Please, at least give me your contact. I'll pay you back. Is that your way of asking me out? No, I... Well, if your boyfriend doesn't mind, give me your hand. Meet me at Caribou's Coffee Shop, 8 a.m. Sunday. Here, treat. After the date, I was sure Percy had feelings for me. I just needed to make him say it. Then I spotted Dumb and Dumber sneaking around my locker. They're trying to fake a note from Percy to me. Tell her to meet Percy at the haunted house in the woods. Then we'll trap her inside. Hmm, lame pranks. But I suppose I can go along with them and get Percy all worked up. Nice. And of course, gotta let Percy know where I was heading. I know this was a stupid prank, but the eerie vibe still gave me the creep. I stood in front of this shabby cottage, <sighs> trying to calm myself and went inside. One step in, and the door snapped shut. I freaked out, banged on the door. Let me out! Let me out! But no use! Only the sound of ghastly laughter resounded. Just then, I could sense someone coming closer to me. I turned around, so terrified, blood drained from my face. Oh my ghost! Stop shrieking, stupid child. I'm not a ghost yet. He, he's a real person? Clover, don't worry. It's just my grandpa. Grandpa? What's your grandpa doing here? Um, this is my house. So this used to be his granddad's house when he was young. Since Percy's mom passed away, grandpa's health deteriorated. No one in the family cared about him except Percy, as they were all deep in sorrow and hatred. Percy mourned for his mom too, but had to stay strong for his grandpa. So he brought him back to this peaceful house, hoping grandpa would feel better. At that moment, I felt bad for what happened to Percy and his family. Losing their loved one must have been so painful. I suddenly understood his motive now, and he badly needed this hug. Clover, I think I'm in love with you. I gushed over his words. Looking in his eyes, I knew it was real, and what I felt for him was also genuine. We could work this out, right? I'd tell him the truth and my side of the story. He'd understand. Percy, I lo- But one phone call from mom changed everything. Honey, we lost the case. Their son has taken everything away from us. Our property, our legacy. Your dad was so distressed, he almost had a heart attack. Hearing mom's words, tears started streaming down my cheeks. What was I thinking? How could we possibly be together? After that, I avoided Percy completely. I also decided to move out of my aunt's and find a new place. And guess who hooked me up? It's Hunter, the guy I met at the carnival. We did end up going on a coffee date. He seemed cool and knew his way around town. So I asked if he knew a place that me and my parents could stay, as they'd move here soon. Look at this. Pretty cozy, huh? Hunter was nice enough to help me move. Just then, there's a knock on the door. I opened it to see Percy. He got so worried and went looking for me. But once he saw Hunter, he was dumbstruck. Didn't expect you'd find this place so fast, brother. Wait, you two are brothers? 
Sadly, yes. And we're supposed to mourn for our late mother. Yet here he is playing lovebirds with you. If losing mum isn't that big of a deal for him, let's see how he'd like losing you. Don't you dare touch her. Or what? You'll punch me? You Alberts are the worst. Was ruining my family not enough? What are you talking about? I'm Clover Howard. My parents were the doctors who tried to save your mom, but got punished for that. I was so stupid to think I could convince you to drop the lawsuit. My family's in shambles now. Happy? I, I didn't know. Get out. Never come near me again. Percy had to haul off with a regretful look. A few days later, my parents arrived. I told them everything that had happened, but they said the son who pressed charges was actually Hunter, not Percy. Turns out, their family situation was complicated. Hunter went missing when he was seven, and not until recently did he return, but then his mom unexpectedly passed away. He must have been so miserable that he had to take it out on us. Percy, on the other hand, was really thoughtful and understanding. He did all he could to stop his brother, and I just put it all on him. I had to go fix this. When I got to the cottage, Percy was trying to stop Hunter from messing with my family again. You don't get a say in this. You grew up with mom's love while I got nothing, and you couldn't even pay her proper respect. We can mourn her in different ways. Mom wouldn't want us to dive deep in hatred. <laughs> mom wouldn't want us to befriend people who couldn't save her, and you fell in love with their daughter? Traitor! Hunter was about to punch Percy. I had to stop him. Quick! Clover? You should leave now. No, I came here to apologize to you. We gotta work things out. Then let's have a little chit-chat, shall we? I was so close to having a taste of Hunter's fist when Percy came between us and took the full blow. We both ended up on the floor. And when we looked up, their grandpa was already there and witnessed everything. Percy, Hunter, stop fighting! His breath suddenly fell short. His knees were trembling. I immediately called my parents for help, but Hunter snatched my wrist. What are you doing? Call your parents here to mock us? No, I'm just trying to help. He then was on the phone with their family doctor, but she couldn't come because there was a storm blocking all roads. Please, can't you see Grandpa's in pain? You shut it. I'd never get help from those lousy doctors again. Hunter, I'm sorry for what happened. I really am. But don't let your hatred endanger your granddad. I could see Hunter's conflict, but with every second passed, their grandpa became pale. His breath got weaker. He needed to decide now. P please save him. I immediately called my parents. Minutes later, they arrived and gave him first aid right away. Luckily, Grandpa reacted positively to the medication and gradually recovered. Hunter then broke down in tears. I can't believe I almost put Grandpa in danger just because of my blind hatred. And you didn't think twice about helping. I, I'm so, so sorry, everyone. Clover, Mr. and Mrs. Howard, I promise I'll make this right. The following day, Hunter arranged a press conference admitting he was wrong to bring my parents to court. Thus, he'd take full responsibility in fixing his mistakes, including clearing our reputation and compensating us financially. When it's settled, we started a new life here. My parents bought a house, founded this hospital to help people, while I got to continue my dream of becoming a doctor. Harvard meds, here I come! Oops, almost forgot. Of course, Percy and I got together. You didn't think we went through all that, and I never admitted my feelings, did you? I'd been holding it back for what felt like forever. Now, I get to have my happy ending. Why is there a hole here? Could it be that the ends did it? What if they're secretly planning an attack on human beings? Hmm, what will happen to the Big Mac? Elaine, does staring at the hole help you figure out the sphere volume? What class is it? Have you been paying attention at all? Have you? Because if you have, you would have known the answer yourself. Excuse me? Oh, wait. Nah, I still don't know. Sorry, what were you saying? This is going to be in the test. You need to focus if you- Oh, this is Japanese class. Duh. That's it. We're going to the principal's office. And that's the huge of my high school life. Hi, my name's Elaine, and I've been living with ADHD since, I don't know. But of course, ADHD manifests itself differently among different people. For me, I just gotta make sure I take my medication- Wait, where's my birth certificate? Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe before I continue. Right after the principal's office visit, I was walking down the hallway when a hunky guy purposely bumped into me, knocking my bag over. Dude, is that a dinosaur? Are you a kindergartner? <laughs> hey, that's my fidget toy. Give it back. Whoops, finders keepers. Who dares mess with my friend? It's Quinn, the Furious Queen. Run! The two guys immediately ran for their lives. 
Right then, Skylar and her new boyfriend also headed over. Isn't she the weirdo from the math class? Don't tell me you're friends with her. Yes, I am indeed. You can only choose one, her or me. How about I dump you instead? Get lost. And these are my girls. We've been best friends since forever and always got each other's backs. I forget my stuff a lot and Quinn always makes sure I got everything with me before leaving any place. While Skylar has me covered every time I dozed off in class. You know, I can't sleep at night because I'm busy thinking about the ants' earth destruction plan. Hmm, maybe they're the ones who terminated the giant dinosaurs. Wait, where was I? Pfft, I don't know. Rewind the video yourself. Valentine's Day soon arrived. Even though Skylar just broke up with her boyfriend, she already had loads of presents from other guys. And so did Quinn. My girls are hot. What about you, Elaine? Nothing this year yet? Nah, I don't care. You guys are all I need. How about you make a move? Any guy you've laid your eyes on? Talk about making a move. When are you going to tell Cromer you've got the biggest crush on him? That's right. Give it a try today, Quinn. I, I don't care. I can get any guy if I want to. Right. Suit yourself, girl. That afternoon, we were walking when we heard an announcement from the school's radio station. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Malcolm from iHeartRadio. Today, we got a special request from someone anonymous delivered to Elaine Miller. Love the way you stared at the hole on the desk that day in math class. It was so cute. I wish I could be that hole instead. Happy Valentine's Day. Someone's got a crush on you, Elaine. You've got a secret admirer. See, someone likes you for who you are. Always stay true to yourself. I wonder who this is. OMG, I gotta find out. But didn't you say you don't care? That's right. But now the game has changed. <laughs> who could it be? They mentioned math class, so they must attend the same class as we do. That's it. All we need is the attendance list from Mr. Wilson's office. But we can't go in there. Ever heard of mission I'm possible? Girls, it's showtime. After class, we waited for Mr. Wilson to leave his office. Then, just like totally spies, we crawled onto the floor, successfully avoided the security guard's gawking eyes, and managed to hide from one of the teachers passing by, then continued secretly advancing toward Mr. Wilson's office. Oh, <gasps> look! They got flaming hot Cheetos now! Elaine. Elaine! After we got the list, I immediately texted a bunch of people to test it out and anxiously waited. But some people replied calling me crazy. Others reported me to Instagram. I even got a visit from the police because they thought I was some creep sliding into people's DMs. Once they left, I immediately FaceTimed the girls. Hmm, from the list, there's still Malcolm you haven't texted. Isn't he working at the radio station with you, Skylar? Yeah, we are working together, but it can't be him. He never asked me about Elaine before. Who knows? You weren't working at the radio station today, were you? My money's on him, Elaine. What should I do? I can't send messages on Instagram anymore. How about writing to him? You know, the old-fashioned way. So I prepared a love letter for Malcolm and even designed a cute envelope for it. But then I got too invested in designing the envelope. I forgot all about the letter. When I finally remembered the letter, I walked all the way back for it. But of course, my ADHD brain had to mess it up again. Not until the day when Quinn and Skylar came over and I couldn't find my doctor's envelope anywhere did I realize I'd sent Mocha my ADHD prescription instead of the letter. We immediately flew to Malcolm's house just as the mailman dropped off the prescription envelope out front. Seeing Malcolm walking out, I frantically ran to the other side of the street and started doing the craziest dance to get Malcolm's attention. Suddenly, I tripped and fell flat on my face. Malcolm rushed to help me up and got me inside his house. We chatted a bit as Malcolm worked on my arm. Elaine, right? We share a few classes together. We do? Yeah, you always sit near Quinn and Skylar, right? I saw you snoozing in class sometimes. Um, I guess so. Uh, look, Malcolm, did you give me the message on the radio? Ah, the confession. Well, it's not me. I'm not your secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I don't have a chance, do I? Skylar talks a lot about you, and I've always wanted to talk to you in person. Um, speaking of Skylar, it's our girls' night tonight. Bye! And thank you. I finally managed to calm my hyperactive heart down when I got back to my room. Is Malcolm the secret admirer? He's not. How embarrassing. See, told you. We're pretty close. He would have told me already. But he seems to like me. Really? I mean, I saw the way he helped you up when you fell. It can't be. Let's focus on finding your real secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I can't hang out with Malcolm while finding my secret admirer. Turned out we both shared a passion for hip-hop. He could make super catchy beats for me to rap. 
Ahem, <laughs> just kidding. Animated story show wouldn't let me. Comment down below if you want a separate video of me rapping. Since then, we started hanging out more often. Malcolm is such a caring and patient person. Sometimes my ADHD kicked in and I cut him off while he was speaking, but he never got mad and just patiently waited for me to finish. Another time when I was blabbing nonstop about whatever was in my mind, I saw him counting. What are you counting for? How many times you switch topics within two minutes? Oh, sorry. No need to. I find it cute, actually. Later on, as we parted ways, I saw Skylar waiting for me, looking a little sad. Hey, what's wrong? I'm gonna be honest with you, because we promised each other. I've actually had a crush on Malcolm ever since we started working together at the radio station. What about your recent boyfriend? Oh, it was just a fling. I just can't stand seeing you with Malcolm. Anyway, don't take it personally. Sorry, I gotta go. Skylar had a crush on Malcolm? But I, I do enjoy being with him. No, sisters first. But it wasn't easy, as Malcolm would always try to approach me. It hurt having to stay away from him. Every time he got close, my heart would beat like crazy. But I also don't want to upset Skylar, as she started distancing herself from me and Quinn. I actually quite like Malcolm. This is so complicated. I honestly don't know what to tell you. How about you try finding your secret admirer? For real this time. He might be a better suit than Malcolm. The next morning, I found a note in my locker. From your secret admirer? They want to meet me near the fountain. But when I got there, I saw another note asking me to come to the bleacher. This better not be some silly prank. When I arrived, I was shocked to see Cromer sitting there by himself. He can't be behind the notes, right? Guess I'll find out now. Just a little closer. Closer. Suddenly, he looked up and stared straight into the camera. I was about to run when he caught me. Hey, Elaine Miller, right? You could have asked me for a picture. Didn't know you have a thing for me. No, no, I, I, it was an accident. Since then, I made sure to be more discreet to see if Cromer was the secret admirer. But man, it's like this guy got the sixth sense or something. Hey, what's wrong? You look nervous. It's because she likes me. She even tried to take pictures of me, right, Elaine? It's okay. I noticed you watching me recently. Come on, just admit it. I know I'm irresistible. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know I like him. No, no, let me explain. You know, I even thought it was a misunderstanding between you and Skylar. But you know what? Now it seems like you just want to steal from us. Hey, guys, chill out. What's going on? You chill out. Do you even know Elaine said she liked Malcolm too? And now she's also taking Cromer. My Cromer. Hey, about Cromer, it's not what you think. And Malcolm, it's not like you and him are a thing. I have as much of an equal chance as you do, don't you think? Then why were you following him just then? And you even took pictures of him? And we're talking about our chance with Malcolm now? I, I, uh, you know it's unfair to me. Unfair? We're always trying to make sure to put you first. But now you think you're the victim? I can't do this anymore. I hope you're happy you got both guys now, best friend. That was too much. They acted as if they took pity on me. I don't need anyone to look after me. I'm all fine by myself. Since we fell out, we're all caught up with our own things. Whenever I passed by Skylar, she just gave me a cold look. Quinn also seemed to have found new joys. I managed to get by just fine, but it felt like something was missing. One time, I was walking when I spotted Skylar and Malcolm surrounded by a crowd. Turned out, Skylar confessed having a crush on Malcolm and asked him out, but he rejected her. The crowd couldn't miss the chance to mock her. Suddenly, I remembered how Skylar used to stand up for me, and I felt so bad for her. So, I decided to defend her this time, but she just ran out of there. I tried to catch up with her, but Skylar wouldn't listen. Suddenly, she crossed the street without looking, and a car came crashing into her. I frantically ran to check on her, and we immediately got her to the ER. Thank God she was fine. Just a couple bruises and scratches, but she refused to let me in. That night, I tried to call Quinn, but it kept sending me to voicemail. But I've made up my mind. I kept ringing her bell and insisted on waiting till she showed up. She finally gave in. Hey, I'm sorry for- Oh, you're sorry for me? No need to take pity on me. Just enjoy your happiness. Malcolm rejected me because he chose you. Happy much? Now just leave me alone, you ruthless, self-centered. Then she slammed the door shut in front of me, leaving me all stunned there. Ha, huh, what a show. This should totally be on Netflix. Cromer? Why are you here? I live right next door. So I see Skylar doesn't want to see you. But I do. Get off of me. I never liked you. Are you playing hard to get now, pretty little thing? 
Right then, Malcolm appeared out of nowhere and bolted to punch Cromer in the face. Didn't you hear what she said? Leave her alone. Can't believe Quinn and I are arguing because of you, creep. If only Quinn knew who her crush truly was. Quinn likes me? Huh, could have told me earlier. What else is he up to? Anyway, thank you. Why are you here? I heard Skylar got into an accident right after the, uh, incident, so I wanted to pay her a visit. Now that you're here, I just want to let you know, uh, actually, the one sending you the confession on the radio that day was Skylar. What? She just wanted you to feel loved and not left alone on Valentine's Day. I was going to give it some time before telling you, but things got complicated all too quickly. Anyway, now that you don't have to find out who your secret admirer is anymore, would you want to go out with me? As a girlfriend, I mean. Malcolm, I do like you a lot, but I just can't bring myself to hurting Skylar ever again. I'm sorry. Ugh, it's okay. I understand. Guess I'll see Skylar another time then. I'm so sorry, Malcolm. Later, I arrived home to mom packing some boxes. Can you check if you still need these from the attic? Otherwise, they have to go. I opened up the boxes to find old pictures of me, Skylar, and Quinn inside, and I immediately burst into tears. We looked so happy together, like nothing could split us apart. That's right. We're sisters. I gotta make things right. The next day, after the first period, I came looking for Skylar. Gosh, I'm so anxious. Where's my fidget toy? What if Skylar's still mad at me? Looking for this? Y yes Skylar, I need to talk- Me too. I'm sorry, Elaine. Ugh, I was so hurt and embarrassed yesterday that I said nasty things to you. And you were right. I should have told you earlier I have a crush on Malcolm. But after everything, I realized how stupid I was and I don't want to lose you or lose us. Hey, me too. I couldn't sleep yesterday after hearing about everything from Skylar. I haven't been myself without you guys. Oh, me neither. You guys mean the world to me. It turned out, Skylar also gave me the locker notes that day. She said she wanted me to give up on finding the secret admirer, and Cromer just happened to be there. After that, I also told Quinn and Skylar about the fight between Cromer and Malcolm that night, when Cromer himself showed up. Hey, Quinn. I just realized I've always liked you. I'm sorry your friend Elaine liked me, but you are my perfect match. Be my girlfriend, will you? Skylar and I immediately gave each other a worried look, when Cromer, you know what Lady Gaga would say? Caught in a bad romance? I know I'm too handsome. You can't resist. She'd say, Women stick together, you jerk. Cromer immediately ran away in embarrassment. <laughs> what a loser. Oh, by the way, Malcolm left to study abroad today and he sent his goodbye to you. I feel so bad about you and Malcolm. It's okay. Right person, wrong time. From then on, us three were always by each other's side and graduated together. We even went to the same college now and made sure we go to every party together. One night at a music festival, I was waiting for Skylar and Quinn to get back from the restroom when they started playing Kendrick Lamar. Hip-hop would always remind me of someone now. Suddenly, a handkerchief was handed to me. I saw you from afar. Is this the right time to get your number now? Hi, I'm Aubrey, a super smart girl with an IQ of 200, and you should be ready for my mind-blowing story. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I grew up in a small village in the countryside where people farm for a living. My family struggled to put food on the table so I could only attend a monastery school. But since childhood, I've always been kind of different. The system is crashing. Please wait for a moment. The chicken is $15.55 minus 15%. Cereal is $2.49. Potatoes, laundry detergent. So the total comes to $64.85 with the discounts and tax included. Mom soon realized I was a gifted child, so she helped me skip some grades. And by the age of five, I was already doing secondary school math. I always topped my classes and other students would bribe me with candies to ask for help with their homework. At the age of eight, I scored 760 on the SAT math and won the spelling bee competition. I became a phenomenon in the area, and reporters even gave me the Stanford Bennett IQ test, which showed I had the same intelligence as a 22-year and 11-month-old person. My parents were super proud of me, especially my dad. Dad, they all gave me Lego and comics for rewards, as if I was an eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah, they're wrong. You're eight years and five months old already, little lady. He was the only one who could spark interesting conversations with me. That is, until he felt terribly ill. But good surgeons were nowhere to be found in this remote countryside, and we couldn't afford to take him to the center either. We were desperate to see a situation get worse and worse. 
then he passed away, leaving us in the depths of despair. Soon after, Mom couldn't afford my school fees anymore, so I had to drop out. Aubrey, I'm so sorry. Don't worry, Mom. There's nothing that school can teach that I can't learn by myself. So she signed me up for a library membership and turned out the best memories I cherished were here, where I could immerse myself in interesting knowledge from all around the world. I was walking down the aisle, absentmindedly running my fingers along the spines of the books, when one caught my eye. And the memories of my dad rushed back to me. If he had been operated on, he'd not have lost. I started turning the first few pages and was captivated immediately. Then suddenly, a fiery desire sparked in my heart. I want to become a surgeon. So I studied every medical book I could find, especially the ones from this author, and decided to save money to enter medical school as soon as possible. To get closer to my dream, I moved out to the city and applied for a job at a coffee shop right next to the medical school. Only... You've broken 10 plates this week already. Are you trying to break a record? Come on, boss. It's just some plates. Not like I burned the whole shop or something. This will be deducted from your salary. Repeat this and you'll be fired. Okay, that's my fault, but I knew he wouldn't fire me. There's no one else who could memorize so many orders all at once. Even Diner Dash Master. Later, I was going to serve a group of students when I heard they were discussing an emergency case. We have to remove that blood clot in segment four of the liver and flush the left lobe. Definitely have to start at the middle hepatic vein. Is this dude serious? Absolutely not. A less intrusive cut would be along the falciform ligament to allow access to segment three. Everyone fell silent and looked at me like I was an alien. Suddenly, the middle-aged man among them stood up. Nice work, young lady. Your method is much more efficient than my student's answer. Which class are you in? Oh, I'm not a medical student but I aspire to be one day. The man asked me to sit down and continued asking me other medical questions, and I answered them all with ease. My adrenaline was rushing. Since my dad passed away, I hadn't had such an interesting discussion. Then, a few days later, the man came back and revealed that he was Dr. Sean Lewis in the principal of the medical school. OMG, you're my favorite author! I admire you so much! Thank you, young lady. Anyway, I came here today with an offer. I was impressed by the knowledge you have in the medical field, and I think you deserve a full expense scholarship to the most prestigious medical school. Can someone pinch me now? This was truly a blessing from heaven that I would definitely not let slip away. Here comes my first day. I went to school extra early to explore as much of the campus as possible. This place was so much bigger and better equipped than my old school. I was looking around the hallway to find my class when someone bumped into me. Oh, isn't it the gave the wrong answer guy at the cafe? He just coldly said sorry and hastily headed to the class over there. 412? It's my class too. I learned that he was Henry, the top student of the class. But obviously he wasn't that good. They'll see. All the theoretical classes didn't make me break a sweat, and I even spotted some mistakes made by the professors. When lunch rolled around, I went to the cafeteria, approaching the first group that caught my eye, and they seemed to be friendly. Want some of my fries? Potato fries contain a high amount of trans fat, which is associated with type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. One day you'll have a stroke, and then you'll know why. Thank me later. They all pouted and left right away. Did I say something wrong? Right then, a nice girl came to me. I'm Laura. Mind if I sit? Sure. Then she told me she was isolated too, just because she wasn't as smart as the other students here. Why are they so mean? Hey, why you gotta be bothered by those toxic people? Do they give you a penny for your thoughts? It's not about how many friends you make. It's about finding one that knows your worth. You're right. I'm Aubrey, by the way. I know, I was in the same class with you this morning. And the way you argue with our professor? Wow, that's impressive. Laura and I quickly became friends. It's great to have her around who could truly see my brilliance and always encouraged me to express myself. Today came a big event. A conference was held by none other than Dr. Lewis. But little did I know that this event would become a battleground between Henry and I. Determined to impress Dr. Lewis, I eagerly raised my hand at every opportunity to answer his inquiries. Each time I did, Henry would swiftly raise his hand as well, competing for Dr. Lewis's attention. We argued back and forth, neither backing down until the end of the conference. After that, Dr. Lewis announced that there was one slot available in his upcoming research project, which would go to the top student of this term. The room buzzed with excitement and anticipation. My heart skipped a beat, for working with Dr. Lewis had been a lifelong dream. 
However, other students started cheering Henry's name. Jeez, I swore I would beat his butt off and show them who deserved it. Time to prove that I was not only unmatched in theory, but also in practice. I was the very first one to finish stitching up the incision. Uh-huh. But as I reached for my gauze, I couldn't find it anywhere. It must be around here, I swear. Oh no, I left it inside the dummy. Okay, this time must be better. How hard could it be to use this defibrillator? But then I accidentally touched the metal pad and got shocked and fell backward. I kept trying in many other practice sessions, but that sucked. Aubrey, this cast looks exactly like a chicken thigh. Do it again. But the most annoying thing was that Henry excelled in all of them and other students started mocking me. After that, I went outside for some fresh air and deep down, I was so disappointed in myself for all my failures. Suddenly, a hand gently patted my shoulder. It was Laura. I couldn't help but hug her and start sobbing. Laura, what if I was wrong about myself? I failed at everything and people started humiliating me. Oh, they just envy you. Nobody can beat your academic scores. That's why they gloated at your failure in practice. But that big brain of yours is what matters the most, right? Y yeah And an opportunity is coming your way. There is an intelligence contest next week. If you win, everyone will have to recognize that you're the best, including Henry. Talk about Laura, my savior. I'll try my best. Just wait and see. A few days later, Laura took me to the library in a private study room. She helped me set up my laptop and left me alone so I could focus. Good luck. I participated in an online oral contest over Skype. There was a panel of judges who asked questions, and all I had to do was answer them verbally. Easy peasy. Now I just need to wait for the results. The next day, I went to school as usual, but then suddenly was called to the principal's office. Dr. Lewis might have known about that competition and saw my name on the top list. I was about to brag about my performance when he accused me of helping other students cheat on their exam. Then he showed me a voice recording of me answering the questions. Wasn't that for the intelligence contest? But Laura said, Dr. Lewis, just wait. I can explain. I frantically called Laura, but she refused to pick up. Enough. I'm so disappointed in you. You're expelled from this moment. Feeling lost and crushed, I trudged myself to a bench in the schoolyard. Hey, are you okay? Okay? You're mocking me? Now that project slot is yours. Happy much? Get out of my sight now! Suddenly a stack of papers fell onto my lap. You might need this. Good luck. I believe you're not a cheater. I confusedly flipped through those papers to see that these were all of Henry's notes from the semester for practice lessons, which could not be found in normal textbooks or lectures. I kept on turning to the last page and saw a scribble. Know your worth. Something awakened inside me, so I swallowed my pride and ran after Henry. Hey, wait! I I've been wrong about you the whole time. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's my fault to act competitively, too. I had no bad intentions. It was just the motivation for me to study harder. I swear. But it's a pity if the medical industry loses someone like you. Um, well, I'm not so sure anymore. I'm used to doing everything so quickly and I can't be patient, which probably explains my clumsiness. That I can help with. Genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work, you know. Since then, I often went to Henry's house to practice. We studied together and he taught me many tips to stay calm, patient, and focused. And turns out, he's also quite the adorable type. Here you go. Thank you, doctor. This is the best stitch I've ever had. One day, I ran into Laura at a gas station. She tried to hide, but I ran straight there to catch her. How could you trick me like that and just disappear like nothing happened? I'm so sorry, Aubrey. I was so blind and just wanted to help those who are bad at studying like me. I never expected it to be that serious and you'd get expelled. And now, why are you here? It's just the medical profession was not my thing, so I quit. But Aubrey, please forgive me. I'm really ashamed of what I did and you were... The only one who had truly been kind to me. <sighs> only when you set things straight and confess everything to Dr. Lewis. But even so, there isn't a likely chance we'll be friends again. So the next day, Henry took Laura and I to see Dr. Lewis. Aubrey, Laura, what are you both doing here? Dr. Lewis, I... I was the one behind the cheating case. Aubrey had no idea and didn't deserve to be punished for my fault. I've been practicing a lot too, sir. Look at these. I've been so careful with every single one. Aubrey has also helped me a lot in our project. 
I hope you can forgive her and grant her another chance. Dr. Lewis looked quite satisfied, but then he suddenly turned pensive and shook his head. Medical school is not where people can freely join and leave. A doctor needs an extra sharp mind and can be fooled as easily as you were. I'm sorry, Aubrey, but you're not qualified. My heart sank to my toes, and I locked myself inside my apartment for the next couple of days. It wasn't until Henry knocked at my door that I actually went outside. He said he wanted to cheer me up and bring me to his favorite restaurant. I sat down waiting while Henry went to get the drinks. Hey! But a second later, he slipped on the stairs and fell down with a thud with all the broken glass scattering around. It's all right. I, I think I only twisted my ankle. Not a big deal. But my stomach dropped when I noticed a trail of blood on the floor and something protruding from his ankle. A large shard of glass. I swiftly dialed a 911 while Henry winced in pain. Aubrey, you have to administer first aid. Oh, right. I called for the restaurant staff to get the first aid kit, but it was clear that the situation was dire. Henry's face grew pale as blood continued to trickle from the wound. I held the wound closed to stop the blood, but my heart felt weak. I couldn't bear to see him suffer. You trust me, Henry? What do you mean? Yes? So I immediately pulled out the toolkit that I brought around in my purse. Henry bit down on the tablecloth beside us, and I started the procedure. I maintained a steady stream of chatter, trying to distract him from the pain, but it wasn't helping. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What? Just to distract myself from the pain. Okay, go ahead. Stand a little taller. And done. When I looked up, there was a crowd cheering in awe and admiration. Guys, I caught the whole thing live. The video of the incident quickly went viral. That night, I tossed and turned in bed, unable to contain my excitement. I saved a human life! Reading the comments of the video filled me with a renewed sense of motivation to pursue my dream. The following morning, I was jolted awake by a notification on my phone. It was an email from Dr. Lewis himself. I headed to Dr. Lewis's office, and to my surprise, he told me he saw the video and gently said, Aubrey, I was once like you arrogant and overly reliant on my natural intelligence. Then, a mistaken surgery left me with regret that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. However, after watching the video, I'm glad that you changed. I saw your humility and eagerness to learn, so I'll give you another chance. So, here I am. You have no idea how much I miss this hallway. Welcome back. How's your ankle doing? Much better, thanks to you. How about a celebration dinner tonight? Sounds great but promise you won't need me to operate on you again. I was scared to death. Ahead of me still lay a long road, but I believe the day I become a skilled surgeon is closer than ever. And soon I can perform more life-saving surgeries for the less fortunate. Da- Bonjour. I'm Chloe and I live here in the French city of Toulouse. I'm working on my debut romance novel about a couple destined to be together despite all the hurdles they face. If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment. Boo! <laughs> Lost in your dumb fictional world again? If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment. <laughs> That's Cedric, my brother. But I doubt it, because we have nothing in common. And he's a massive pain in my... Uh -huh. Anyway, I guess you could say I'm introverted, and I dream of becoming a best-selling romance novelist, making a living out of doing what I love. Only dreams don't always go to plan, and publishing houses don't seem to like my drafts. Meanwhile, Cedric is Satan in disguise, whose sole purpose is making my life miserable. He turned off my alarm and made me late for a meeting, changed all of my contacts' names to emojis, and one time I woke up to see my laptop covered all in plastic wrap. The problem was he got away with being a jerk simply because he was deemed good-looking. In his fangirl's eyes, he could do no wrong. Living with Cedric was such an endurance test, so I avoided him the best I could by going to a private school, instead of the same public school as him. Everything was fine, until our parents lost everything in stocks, and we had no choice but to move into this teeny, tiny house. One night I went downstairs to get some water and saw Mom and Dad up late with bills piled up around them. Seeing them like that made me desperately want to help. So the next day I told him that the public school had a creative writing club and that I wanted to transfer there. My tuition fees weren't a burden anymore, but going to the same school as Cedric was not ideal. So I insisted that he acted like he didn't know me at all. Still, the first few days were terrible as I kept getting lost and felt so out of place. I hardly looked up and only identified other students by their shoes. Thank goodness for the pink and white sneaker girl, Emma. She was the only person who actually noticed me, and when I told her about my writing dreams, she was really supportive. We became best friends and could chat about everything, even my annoying brother.
Things were better at school, but not at home. My parents were still struggling to hide their money problems, and Cedric, well, was just being Cedric. Couldn't he see that now wasn't the time for his clown antics? I helped out as much as I could by cleaning, doing laundry, preparing meals, and even got a part-time job in a patisserie. Well, he literally did nothing. Why can't you stop fooling around? Chill out, sis. Even when you have a mare, all the stress will give you gray hair. Fine, act like a moron and stay in this moronic place forever. I'll get our old house back alone. After a busy shift, I just wanted to get home and go straight to bed. Only when walking along the curb, I spotted Cedric doing some dumb, noisy performance. Ugh, such a laughable, selfish bum. I had to seriously hold back or else my fist would definitely land on his face. Oh, I still had the last chapter to finish. My body was ready to shut down, but I couldn't slack. Not if I wanted to complete it by Louis Beaumont's book launch. He's my favorite author. I'd planned for months to fly to Nice and hand him my manuscript. Suddenly, the lights went out. Guys, looks like the electricity company cut us off because of those unpaid bills. Gosh, we can't live like this. So I pulled out some money from the back of the manuscript. This was money for my niece trip, but this is more urgent, so I gotta do what I have to do. Mom, Dad, here's some money, just to help out a bit. The next day, Cedric barged into my room with a smug grin on his face. Guess who's going to Paris? Try not to miss me too much, will ya? What? But, but where did you get your money from? Mom and Dad, duh, check it out. That's my money? I can't believe this. We don't even have electricity, but they gave him money to go mess around in Paris? I shoved him out of my room and slammed the door shut. I'd always tried my best to not disappoint them, yet they favored my deadbeat brother and spoiled him rotten. All this family stuff was eating me up, so on school day, I confided in Emma. Only when I tried talking to her, she seemed distracted and kept drifting with the music. Em, Em, are you listening? Oh, sorry but this beat is straight up fire. Look, he's the winner of this contest. Isn't he amazing and talented? I looked at her phone and saw, what? Cedric? So he came to Paris for this stupid contest? Don't talk about him, okay? That's my selfish, uncaring brother I've always talked about. Be his fan, and we can't be friends anymore. Things got even worse when Cedric went home and literally made it rain with his reward money. Chloe, look at all of this money your brother won. Thanks to his talent, we can go back to our old house. Ugh, why is everything so easy for Cedric? He did some nonsense rap and became a celebrity. Meanwhile, it's me who had to give up my trip, my dream. At least we got the old house back, but day after day, these annoying reporters are driving me crazy. How did you come up with meaningful lyrics? Meaningful? Everyone knows rap isn't actually music. It's just some noise full of swearing and insults. Yeah, ignore her. She's just cranky from skipping breakfast. There's no escaping Cedric's name, not even at school. Please, please, please introduce me to him. Why are you so obsessed with him? Don't you remember anything I said about how terrible he is? Come on, give his music a try. I can't believe someone who wrote such beautiful lyrics can be as bad as you say he is. Fine. If she wanted to meet him, then I'd grant her that wish. It's about time she saw his true face. I opened the door and showed Emma inside when suddenly we were covered in a cloud of confetti. Why the long face? My grand welcome was the bomb. Do you know how long it would take to clean this mess? Ugh, Em, this is my brother. An idiot. Idiot brother. Em. But then I turned around to see Emma already soaking up Cedric's every word. I can't take this anymore. My time would be better spent writing. Trembling thoughts through fear. Your eyes will find mine. Love will bind us like a cat's nine lives. Wow, that's perfect. Wait, that voice sounds unfamiliar. Oh my, this guy was heartthrob level handsome. Bonjour, I'm Pierre, Cedric's colleague. Is he home? Yes, let me show you the way. What are you seeking him for? We're collaborating on my next album, so I'm here to practice. As a senior singer, I also helped Cedric build his show and industry connections. He's superb, isn't he? After that day, Pierre visited my house more often. Turns out he's a sweet and gentle guy who always brought us gifts, such as flowers and scented candles. And after dinner, he even helped me wash up. How can such an angel work with my devil brother? One day when I was out with Emma, suddenly she looped her arm around me and said, You sure seem chirper these days. It's probably because Cedric's often away on music shows. You're telling me it has nothing to do with Pierre? Come on, Chloe, it's written all over your face. Fine. 
He's really sweet, and his smile is as bright as the sun. How can I approach someone like him? Hmm, why not start with a love letter? I took Emma's advice and wrote the most romantic letter ever, then brought it to his company. If anyone asks, I'll say I'm here to see my brother. Huh? Are they arguing? I went over to Pierre and asked him what had happened. Oh, it's nothing really. Cedric is just stressed out from his busy schedule. Yeah, right. As if there was anything stressful about this nonsense rap thing. Now is my moment. So I stuffed the letter in Pierre's hand, then ran away. I was still giddy with excitement when I arrived home. Only Cedric ruined my mood by sitting there looking like he'd swallowed a wasp. Oh no, are all showbiz parties too tiring? What a tragedy. Shut it, Chloe. What does a dreamer like you know? Dreamer? At least I'm not a self-centered, shallow idiot. I sacrificed everything so you could go after your dumb rap career. And all you do is act like an ungrateful jerk. Grow up and stop being so childish. I expected him to shout back at me, but instead he gave me this dead look, then trudged off to his room. He didn't come down for dinner or anything for the next three days. Hmm, this house sure was quiet without him. But he's a chill guy and things will go back to normal soon, right? I guess I should just enjoy the peace while I could. The next day, Emma showed up at my house all worked up. Is Cedric here? He didn't answer any texts and calls. Huh? You two are messaging each other? Uh, um, I just wonder if he's okay. How typical of you to talk to him behind my back. To my surprise, Emma just impatiently barred past me and ran up to Cedric's room. Then she reappeared with a note. Cedric's gone. Jeez, how irresponsible and impulsive. He really doesn't care about anyone but himself. Enough. I won't listen to you badmouth your brother anymore. Can't you see he's seriously struggling and showing signs of depression? Who's the one who doesn't care about family here? And you really believe you're better than him? Emma's outburst left me stunned. Is Cedric really depressed? How was I meant to know that when he's always goofing around? That evening, Mom and Dad kept fretting about Cedric's disappearance. He gave his all to help us while we could do nothing to help him. Remember those days he performed on the streets? He gave us all the money he earned, and he always tried to cheer us up when things were down. Cedric only wanted to join the rap contest to win some more money. He was very nervous, but we believed in him, so we gave him the money to enter. Oh God, so I misunderstood him all along? Suddenly I remembered his winning track that Emma insisted that I listen to. I went up to my room and turned it on. It's about us, his beloved family. Turns out he wasn't a deadbeat idle loser like I thought he was. He always puts on a happy face to lift other spirits while quietly struggling with his own demons. I needed to find him and apologize immediately, so I went to Pierre for help. I had no idea he was struggling so badly. I should have noticed that he was suffering and not overloaded him with work. But there's an important show coming. If Cedric was a no-show, he'd be in breach of his contract and have to pay a huge sum in compensation. Oh no, that's not good. What should we do now? You know what? You look a lot like Cedric. How about you disguise as him? But how? Don't worry, our makeup team is top-notch. Nobody's gonna know. This all sounded crazy, but it seemed like I had no other choice. My family couldn't be in debt again for this. Being this close to Pierre made my heart flutter. He took me for my makeover, then I learned to lip-sync and perform on stage. I even tried to walk and talk like my brother. I felt bad about deceiving his fans, but I couldn't risk Cedric getting into big trouble. It's only a one-time thing. Sometimes I lip-sync too. It's no big deal. I felt a bit confused. Then suddenly, a stage crew member above me accidentally dropped a wrench. It could have knocked me off if Pierre didn't swoop in and save the day. Now, back to practicing, and oh boy, was it hectic. Pierre stayed with me the whole time and was really supportive. We also never stopped trying to look for Cedric together. I felt our connection growing, but couldn't figure out why he hadn't made any move. Maybe my first letter hadn't been clear enough, so I sneaked into Pierre's room and left him another one. Only later that day, I saw him glued to his phone, so I took a glance. Huh? He was messaging somebody with a very cheesy nickname. Right, he wasn't interested because he was already dating someone else. Oh no, I have to reclaim my second letter before humiliating myself. I ran into his room but couldn't find it anywhere. Wait, what's this? Here comes the big night. I was absolutely terrified. Pierre smiled sweetly at me and held my hands. We shared a look, then stepped on stage together. There were so many people out there. My legs felt numb, but then I spotted Emma beaming at me from the front row, and my nerves eased again. I quickly found the beat, then lip-synced and danced perfectly. 
But halfway through the song, the stage light suddenly went off and a shadowy figure walked toward me. Cedric! The audience oohed and awed, then clapped in excitement as Cedric continued the rest of the performance. During the break, everyone went backstage and saw Pierre grab Cedric's arm. Cedric, where have you been? We've all been worried sick. Drop the act. You're just using me to make yourself rich, forcing me to do show after show, and when I was exhausted, you pushed lip syncing onto me. What are you talking about? These shows are to help you gain support. Starting out in this industry is hard. Hey, I even lent you some money to get your house back. You mean the money you used to tie my brother in with a stupid contract? You compelled Cedric to work exclusively with you, performing two years for free to clear his debt. But according to these receipts for each show, the money he should have received already exceeded the amount he owed you. W what the? Surprised much? Now we have all the evidence against you. So what? Cedric signed it anyway. A contract is a contract. Break it and I'll get you kicked out of the company and make sure you never get any show again. Your whole family will be dirt poor alike before. I don't think so. What would the public say if they knew you've been flirting with him all along? And when he rejected you, you manipulated and overworked him until he agreed to date you. Uh, uh, how long have you known? Long enough to expose you. Now, you have two options. One, cancel the contract within the next 24 hours and pay my brother the access money you exploited from him. Or two, we'll publish what you did and see if you survive in showbiz afterward. I don't hate you for having feelings for me, but this deal is not fair. Pierre looked nervous and angry, then just stormed off. I turned to my annoying, goofy brother and gave him a big hug. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you before. Why didn't you tell us that you borrowed money to get back our house? I know how much you wanted our house back, so I joined the contest, but the prize money wasn't enough. That's when I asked Pierre. Silly me. If you hadn't found the contract and receipts, I would have still believed his lies and worked till exhaustion. So you did get my message. I was about to shut off all connections to the world. But that day I felt super uneasy, so I opened my phone and saw your message. Must be sibling telepathy. One more thing. Emma, you truly helped me find myself again. What do you say? Do you want to be a superstar rapper's girlfriend? Yes, I do. Please keep the lovey-dovey stuff to a minimum in front of me. Luckily, I was spared when a stage crew called Cedric to go back on stage. You know, it's not easy for us artists to have a big platform, literally like the stage. We always have a price to pay for the glory. Because of that, I'm eternally grateful for my amazing family and friends who always have my back. And a big shout out to my sister for being my inspiration for this song. Then he started rapping to my poetry. His rhymes and my poems are flowing, really getting the crowd going. He's a lyrical gymnastic genius. After the show, Cedric received a video from Pierre. Cedric, I'm sorry for taking advantage of you. I like you so much and wanted to keep you close. I'll pay back what I owe you, then take a break from showbiz for a while. I really hope one day you can forgive me. Phew, all that drama was a lot for my introverted self to handle. So now I've treated myself to some me time to recharge. Thanks to Cedric rapping, dozens of my publishers reached out to me for my poems, including those who'd previously rejected me. <sighs> Gosh, am I seeing it wrong? A mail from Louis Beaumont himself? I can't wait to see him in person. And you keep working on your dream. Perhaps a secret angel is on your sale. I'm Minzy from Seoul. Do you believe conspiracy theories are real? Because I do. Before I tell you my paranormal story, please like and subscribe. Nothing much to say about myself. I'm timid, introverted, but above all, I have a big ambition to webtoon horror category. Ahem! It's one of a kind, right? I've spent sleepless nights on that. Go kneel in the hallway for 30 minutes. Now! Aw, oh, man. Creepy Mincy is at it again. She wants to haunt the whole class with those ugly doodles or something? Ugly? Well, not as ugly as your... your grandmother. The whole class gasped at my insensitive words. But it's that girl. Supin's fault first. No matter how invested I was into my draft, it only ended up another chance for Supin and her posse to laugh at me. And well, thanks to my poor communication skills, no one wants to be my friend. Well, except Hajun, my childhood friend. He's always been so nice to me, not to mention he's handsome, friendly, and smart. You could tell I had a crush on him, right? But of course, I have no guts to tell him. <sighs> One day I was riding my bike around when I suddenly saw flyers from Blackwood Publishing, the biggest publisher on Webtoon. They're looking for a comic collaborator. Oh wow, 
I could send mine to them. But would I stand a chance? I bet the candidates are way more talented than me. As, I guess I better stop dreaming. Just then, a skater kid dashed towards me. I managed to dodge him, but ended up crashing onto the pavement fence. I felt myself flip through the air, and then everything went black. When I opened my eyes, I found myself on the hospital bed. Mom and Dad were beside me. They looked like they couldn't believe it, then burst into tears. Mincy, honey, you're finally awake. Thank God, you've been in a coma for the whole month. We were worried sick. Hold on a sec. A whole month in a coma? Was I that seriously injured? It took me a few days to recover and process all of this before going back to school. Bet these kids didn't even notice I was missing class for a month, though. But suddenly, someone sprung on my back. Supin? Oh, here you are, Urichingu! Let's go shopping today! The dress you picked me last time was perfect for my date! W what dress? Am I friends with these mean girls now? And not just them. Everyone else seemed to be friendly to me all of a sudden. They gave me cookies, carried my food tray, and even lent me their notebooks. It's weird, but kind of nice, though. <laughs> Except the only person I cared about just straight up ignored me. Hey, Hajun, wait up. Are you all right? I'm fine. It's none of your concern anyway. Oh, I just want to check in on you. <sighs> Could today get any weirder? Yes, it did. When I came home, I suddenly received an email from Blackwood Publishing. Congratulations! Your digital comic is now officially published on our website. To celebrate your success, please come to our office tomorrow. Huh? Is this a prank? I quickly checked, and it's not. My comics were literally on the headliner. But how? I mustered all the courage and went to the publisher. One step in, and I was overwhelmed by all the facilities. It was all so new to me. But just then, a group of people flocked around me and babbled to me nonstop, like they'd known me before. Yeah, our faith boy group BOF, Boys Over Flowers, is holding a concert tonight. Those opas make my emo heartbeat like crazy. Hey, you should come with us. It's gonna be so much fun. Eek! Oh, but didn't those boys only lip sync and dance half-heartedly? I even heard people say it's a waste of money going to their concert. Guys, did I say something wrong? Suddenly, I got this chill down my spine. Someone's hands were crawling around my waist. My boo-boo's here. Ah, pervert! I turned around and slapped him in the face. Oh, why did you do that? It's me who should ask this. Why did you touch me? Are you serious? Wait, are you still sulking with me? What? I'm sorry, okay? Now your boyfriend's ready for some snuggles. Boyfriend? Last time I checked, I still had the biggest crush on Hajun. How did I settle for this dandy? The guy was extremely clingy. He wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. Um, don't you have any work to do? Work? I am. I'm tending to the artwork of my life. You! <laughs> uh, sure. He also kept insisting on seeing my webtoon draft to help me polish it. Help my butt? He only messed it all up. Not to mention, everything is completely new to me, but everyone acted like I'm so used to all of this. This didn't feel right. Later the day I told my parents about this, and they said the doctor did mention possible memory loss due to brain injury. Hmm, makes sense. But why did they seem all anxious? Over the next few days, I tried to cope with my new life, even though it didn't make any sense at all. Like, I now had my favorite seat in the canteen. You nerds are sitting on Minzy's spot. Move! And apparently, I got a new hobby of skipping school now. What's the matter? You've done this so many times before. <laughs> Why did I even do this? Hajun, on the other hand, still kept distance from me. Until today, we had a project discussion. I tried to break the ice, but he only replied coldly. Why are you here? This whole month you've ditched me to hang out with your hot friends. And now you suddenly want to talk to me again? The, the whole month? What do you mean? You suddenly turned 180 degrees and became this attention seeker. You even pulled stupid pranks on those mean girls and got them to worship you as their leader. B but I was in a coma the whole month. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No. Why would I joke about something like that? Then who was the Mincy I saw every day at school the past month? Was he saying I was in two places at once? How was that possible? Hajun came up with a bunch of conspiracy theories, then concluded that I had an imposter, and she had been replacing me while I was in the hospital. It made perfect sense, but so bizarre at the same time. Seeing how freaked out I was, Hajun gently comforted me, saying he'd help me figure this out. I knew it. He still cared about me deep down. While we were discussing, Su Pin and her clique came interrupting us. Hey, Mincy! What are you doing with this geek? Remember our group meetup today with the Ansan Highs boys? Meetup? Uh, no, 
I don't think I can- Of course she remembers. Can I come too? I'll keep my mouth zipped. Fine. Now hurry up. Psst. What are you up to? Your imposters must have known about this meetup, so she might be there. This is our chance to catch her. Except the imposter was nowhere to be found, while I was stuck with these self-obsessed dudes. Where's your sass, Mincy? Introduce yourself. Oh, um, hi. Uh, I'm Mincy. You can call me Sugar Mincy, because I'm sweet as pie and you sure want to take a, a bite. The whole room was dead silence. <laughs> Girl, you got no riz. Wonder why you can't date anyone. Everyone was laughing at my face. Luckily, Hajun grabbed my hand and took me out of there. Here's much better. But I couldn't help but thinking how my life had turned upside down because of that imposter. You all right? You don't have to force yourself into a mold that isn't for you. You're special for who you are. And I prefer this you rather than that imposter. I could feel something churning in my stomach. I'm so glad I always have him by my side. The next morning, Su Pin and her clique suddenly came to apologize for laughing at me. But why? Uh, didn't you come back last night and snapped at us? Told us to publicly apologize to you today? I did? So the copycat did come to the karaoke. Did she intentionally stalk me? Later that day, I went to tell Hajun about this. But why did she have to do that? I mean, she tried to stand up for you, right? I don't know. It must be part of her scheme or something. I have to find her ASAP. Suddenly, I got the notification of the Mean Girls live streaming at a cafe. Well, guess who it is, guys? Oh, our little rich lady is a waitress. And she dared to look down on us all the time. She steered her cam towards the poor girl they were talking about. And she looked exactly like me. It's her! Hajun and I immediately rushed to the cafe and saw Su Pin and the imposter was about to jump at each other. What's going on here? Mincy? Wh what? Why are there two Mincy's? It's a ghost! Guys, run! You! Who are you? And why did you pretend to be me, you imposter? Mincy, finally we meet. I'm your twin sister. Minha. S sister? We're related? But mom and dad never told me I had a long lost sister. Because you're adopted. They didn't know you had a twin sister who just got adopted before you. You're lying. I'm not. I didn't know this either until my mom was in her final moments. Mom had been sick for a while, so one day she called me to her bed, told me the truth before she drew her last breath. After that, I came to find you, but you were already in the hospital by then. You did wake up after surgery, but once you saw me, you immediately had a seizure and fell back into a coma again. Your parents and I agreed it was best for you if I stayed away and waited until you fully recovered. Meanwhile, you decided to live my life for me? Believe it or not, I actually wanted to know what my long-lost twin sister's like, how she's doing. Turns out you're a very talented comic artist, but you're always so insecure. And you're not doing well with the kids at school either. So I wanted to help you out. Sending your webtoon draft, working at the publisher, and fixing those mean girls' wagons. I just went with it and ended up getting too wrapped up. Really, did you get wrapped up in dating a random guy under my name too? And what about school? Did my parents agree to let you replace me? It was my idea and I persuaded them. They're just worried about you. I didn't ask for any of these in the first place. Thanks to you, I've become a stranger to my own life. You're happy now? Then I ran away, never wanting to see her again. Still, the worst part was, my parents lied to me. Why did you do it? You didn't tell me I'm adopted, and now you let a stranger replace me? Do you really see me as your child? Minty, honey, of course you're our daughter. Nothing could ever change that. We were afraid you'd be sad if you knew you were adopted. Truthfully, we love you more than you can ever imagine. It's a lot to process, but I had to be strong and stay focused. But soon, whisperings caught my ears. Did you notice Mincy recently is different and even a little bit dull? Where's the cheeky Mincy we're used to? Hey, do you get that bad vibe from Mincy lately? Somehow she'd gone back to being a sullen, creepy nerd again. God, why did everyone keep comparing me to that imposter? Hey, you all right? No, I'm not. Everyone seemed to like Minha and she'd only been here for a month. But nobody cared about me. I do care about you. You always got me. Your handsome friend, ready to the rescue. <laughs> Whatever you say. Come to think of it, your sister only meant well. Despite her way, all she wants is to help you to be more open and show your hidden talents to the world. What Hajun said got me thinking that night. Maybe he's right. If it hadn't been for her, my webtoon would have been forever locked in my iPad. Besides, she's only got me as a family. I've got to see her now. Hey, I came to apologize. 
I could see you only meant well, and I was only acting ungrateful. I'm sorry. And also, thank you, Uni. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's my fault too for acting on my own and getting myself to fall in love with Si Wu. I haven't told him yet, but I will find the chance. Sorry for dragging you into my stuff. I leapt into her embrace and felt the happy tears running down my cheeks. After the teary reunion, we spend hours catching up with each other. It's like we're reading each other's minds. Must be the twin bond. <laughs> I even invited her to my house and we had a good time. For the next couple days, I only focused on the webtoon and getting to know myself better. With Hajun's help, I now felt more comfortable and confident speaking with others. One day at the publisher, while I was having a little chit-chat break, a colleague rushed in. Minzi, Minzi, did you hear the news? Your webtoon won the first prize of Comic Award. Comic? The most renowned award in webtoon? Oh my god, I'm dreaming, right? My hard work finally bore fruits. I was celebrating with my colleague when out of nowhere, Si Wu dragged me out. You better announce me as the co-author. I helped you with the sketches, the script, the coloring, yada yada yada, remember? What? You were only messing it up. Do you even know what the story is about? Babe, don't challenge me. Or else, I would tell the director, aka my dad, to kick you out. And by the way, let's break up. Excuse me? You really think I like you? Oh, please. I only do it for your webtoon, babe. Ugh, that dandy jerk. I knew he was no good. But what could I do now? Later, I told Minha everything, and she was heartbroken and begged me to help her sneak into Siwoo's office. So I did. Siwoo, please don't leave me. How could I live without you? Oh, it'll be hard, because I'm irresistible. <laughs> but you gotta let go, babe. You have nothing else to offer me. I already know you don't love me, but I do love you. And I already put a love spell on you. You'll forever be haunted by me. <laughs> Then, Minha fainted, crashed on the floor. Scaredy cat Siwoo was freaking out. Hey, hey, you're not gone, right? Suddenly, the light turned off. What in the Holy Spirit's going on? The light turned on again, and the guy stopped screaming until he saw me. Hi, babe. Ah, what? Why are, what are you? You don't recognize me? It's me. Minji, in spirit form. Stay the heck away from me. After every despicable thing you've done to me. Please, please. Come with me, you crooked. To, to, where? To the other side. He was so scared his eyes went white. Then he fainted. <laughs> Serves you right. And let me introduce my Ekip with Minha, who should win Oscars for that performance, and Hajun, who's behind the light effect. Didn't think of that, did you? After that, Siwoo kept insisting I was some spiritual force that haunted this place. Then eventually, he quit the job. And of course, I had the full copyright of my webtoon and was eligible to receive the comic award. My career has just begun as I decided to continue to work at Blackwood. Mom and Dad also decided to adopt Minha into our family, and we could finally be together. That's the magic I wanted to tell you. This unexpected event changed my life for the better. Chance doesn't come twice, right? You have to grasp it. By the way, I want to ask, do you guys have any unexpected events that changed your entire life? Tell us in the comments below. Hang on, here's one more thing I have to do for the old shy me. Hajun, uh, I've been wanting to tell you something. The past event got me thinking, if I don't start telling you how I feel now, I might regret it later. So, Kim Hajun, I like you. So, so much. Finally, it took you that long. When you were in hospital, you weren't the Minzi I knew, which freaked me out thinking what if I couldn't see the real you anymore. It's comforting that you're still here, because I got a huge crush on you too. Seeing Chi acting shamelessly loving around Nam in front of Ronnie when she knew all the truth even irked her more. Can't underestimate this snake. What is she scheming? I'd better watch out on her. Later that day, while working near the kitchen, Veronica spotted Chi doing something fishy. Hey, what you doing? N nothing Veronica immediately bent down to see a wrinkled food package in a bin nearby. What? The expiration date was 2023, a year ago? Hey, why do we still have expired food here? Oh gosh, but is it ice cream that room 302 asked for? Right away, Ronnie asked the staff to check all of the food orders and rushed after the food trolley which was set to arrive at room 302. 
The news was soon to reach Nam, so he sprinted to the guest room to see Ronnie was already there. Excuse me, miss. On behalf of the hotel, I do apologize for this inconvenience. It's on us for not training our staff well. I'll be talking to her now. Then he dragged Ronnie into the corner. You're ruining others' efforts due to your irresponsibility, don't you see? If you can't do it properly, then do nothing! His words were like thousands of daggers pierced into Ronnie's heart. Okay, now I got it. In his eyes, I was only that. Shallow. Suddenly, the guests came near them. Excuse me, I know you're teaching your staff and it's not my business to interfere, but this girl wasn't the one who delivered the food earlier. But she came here and sincerely apologized to me for what she didn't do, which is much appreciated. You should reward her instead. Hearing that, Ronnie couldn't hold her tears and ran away. Ronnie! Veronica! Sorry, I gotta go. Our manager will talk with you soon, and the hotel will offer some compensation for your trouble. Gosh, my anger got the better of me, and I hurt her once again. Where are you, Ronnie? I was too dumb to keep chasing after him like a fool, while well, he didn't bother to care, and even wanted to kick me out. Okay, fine. I'll go as you wish. In the blurred vision due to teary eyes, Ronnie spotted a smirk face of Chi, the one who's behind all of this. If it hadn't been for my brother and two families, I would expose you already, you snake! That night, Ronnie didn't want to face Nam at the hotel, so she ran to Hoi River for some fresh air, and in front of her eyes was Hoi An with a different charm. At night, when the dark covered everything, colorful lanterns were lit up, stretching the sparkling lights in every corner of the ancient town. But the splendid view didn't color her any happier. She was glumly dragging her feet on the sidewalk when she spotted an old woman sitting on the edge of a riverbank selling floating lanterns, and her hands were shaking when she was trying to light them up. Let. Me. Help. You. Okay? Then she sat down and helped her kindle the candles and deliver lanterns to buyers. Seeing their faces beaming with the flickering candle lights made Ronnie unconsciously smile. It's like everyone whistles their dreams in lanterns and has the river give wings to the wishes to fly high and far away. Ronnie was immersed in her own thoughts when she accidentally burned herself. Are you okay? What? Ronnie, listen, I came to apologize to you for the misunderstanding this afternoon. I should have listened to you first. Let me help you. Don't frown like that, or you're gonna be some wrinkled old woman soon. Hey, hello, Earth to Veronica. All right, let me show you around. We only have tomorrow here before returning to Da Nang. You will regret it if you don't go. Come on, I beg you, okay? Veronica was still in a foul mood, but unknowingly stretched her hand. They said goodbye to the old lady and walked side by side along Hoi River, but no one said anything until, Are you gonna ignore me forever like that? You think I'm some annoying girl, don't you? Huh? Why you ask that? Um, no, maybe. Then why you had to hire a fake girlfriend just to avoid me? What? She knew it? But how? I, I, I'm sorry. It was the reason at first, but it turns out I was wrong about you. You have a good heart and don't deserve those things. Maybe it's too late, but I'm sorry again. I should have thought it through first. What makes you think of me like that? It's like years ago. You suddenly slammed a door in front of me without a word and then now turned indifferent and hateful to me. Why, Nom? Something happened, and I'll tell you when time feels right. Please trust me. I never hate you and will never. Please tell me, what should I do for you to forgive me? I don't know, but maybe... Ah, uh, Padalo. Or here they call it Dap V, right? Yes, I want to try Dap V, but we're not done here. Okay, okay. The next day, Nam took Ronnie to Padalo as promised. Okay, Dap is riding, V is the duck. But wait, it's clearly a swan. Why? Um, I don't know either. Vietnamese is complicated. <laughs> Having tickets, two of them were waiting to be on boat, and Veronica couldn't hide her excitement. Okay, be careful! It's flippable! Poof! I'm not a kid! Then Ronnie excitedly jumped on the boat, causing it to sway from side to side, and it wobbled even more as she was being extremely panicked. Ah! I haven't watched Stranger Things Season 5 yet! I can't die now! Nom, save me! <laughs> I told you what! Now, take my hand! Ronnie slowly held out her hand, then Nam gently pulled her in his arms and helped her sit down. Do you feel okay now? No, I'm not okay at all. Hey, aren't you saying you want to do Padalo? Here you go. Ah, that's right. Then they left the dock and started pedaling farther. Ronnie at first had some troubles in steering the boat, but with the help of Nam, she totally enjoyed this little game. 
It's just like riding a bike. Simple, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of an exercise, right? An exercise more. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, they even raced against each other enthusiastically and went to the middle of the lake without knowing. Hey, why suddenly stop? <sighs> I feel my legs are gonna leave me soon. Then suddenly, rain started pouring down and the boat started tottering. They looked around to find that the other boats had already returned to the dock, leaving theirs alone here. Oh my god, we had to pedal fast to the dock now! Hey, together! One, two, one, two... But the strong wind made the boat even more wobbly. Just wait here until the rain stops. What? I couldn't just wait here! Anyone? Help! Help! But Ronnie's attempt clearly turned in vain, as it only invited more people on the shore taking pictures and recording them. After a while, everything was quiet before Nam broke the silence. Do you still recall that day back in secondary school? We snuck outside to buy a new flavor of our favorite bubble tea. It was raining hard, just like today. <laughs> you still remember that? Right, that day we were soaked like rats, just to be chased by a dog, and we ended up dropping bubble teas on the road, and even got scolded by teachers. <laughs> <laughs> then the two of them kept talking about the good old moments together, without noticing the rain had abated since when. Soon after, the safeguard appeared to help them return to the dock. About Ronnie and Nam, they might get wet, but more than that, they were soaked in the fresh emotions towards each other. Nom, let's call today Duck Day. And on this day, June 6th, every year, we're gonna do Padalo again. Sounds fun. That night, someone uploaded photos of them on the lake on the internet. It naturally became the meme of the day and received thousands of reactions. <laughs> <laughs> Those comments are so funny. Nom, you read it? But not as funny as your face. Then every night after, they kept texting each other, and it was always dawn when they finally said goodnight. Is it too early to think about our firstborn child's name? <laughs> <sighs> no way Nam would do anything to harm my family. But what should I do to convince Grayson? I've been wrong about her all the time. It was stupid of me to project my hatred towards her mom to her. Seeing this, Grayson and Chi surely didn't take it well. Bay, what are we supposed to do now? Just one more step away. Early the next morning, Grayson met Ronnie for some negotiation. My baby sis, our plan needs your little help to be kicked off. No way I help you. Stop your silly crush. Do you really dare to betray your own family just for some jerk? Says you. I give you one week to find evidence and now what you've got? Nothing. Apart from some dirty tricks you pulled on Nom. Tell you what, I'm out. Grayson, what now? We don't need her. I have another plan. A few days later, Nam's hotel suddenly got back out at night. But it wasn't the only thing out of his expectation. Call technicals to check the grid now! Hey you! Your boss here, right? Yes ma'am. I apologize for the accident. It might just be some minor technical problems. Please come back to your room. The electricity will soon return. Patient? How could I be patient when your staff humiliated me? W what ma'am? Everything's turned pitch black and I was trying to find some receptionist. Here you are. Why cut the electricity without notice, huh? Please bring me a fan or something. I'm sweating like crazy. You're sweating not for being hot, but for you being overweight, miss. You're saying what? Are you deaf? I'm saying because you're fat, miss. So this is the way you train your staff? Right then, more and more customers came to confront Nam. Hey, some staff snuck into my room saying to fix some wire plugs, but he stole my wallet away. Me too. My laptop was stolen when the lights were out as well. Hotel what? It's a scam, guys. Nam was trying to calm the guests down, but they seemed not to be in a mood for any explanations. Instead, they asked to return the room and demanded a payback. How, how could this happen? Little did he know, the mastermind was already sneakily slipping through the crowd to run away. That's it. And now let's see how that jerk deals with this. Nam tried to track down the staff, but he was nowhere to be seen. The hotel was plunged into turmoil. Orders came in few, and the reputation was seriously in ruin. Ronnie couldn't bear seeing that. It's definitely Grayson who's behind all of this. He's my brother, but he's wrong this time. Even if it's true Nam wanted to harm our family, there's many other ways to confront this. And she meant it. She came straight to find Grayson. It's you, right? What are you talking about? Don't act innocent. It's you who set up the Noms Hotel incident. Yes, it's me. So what? This little brat has no skills in running business anyway. I just helped him realize it sooner. You have to admit this and return the prestige to Noms Hotel. Huh? Are you dreaming, my little sis? Oh no, my big bro. I'm sorry to tell you that actually, I've already recorded our conversation. If you have no guts to admit, then let your little sis do it. 
I, hey, I don't know anything about this. Don't drag me into this. Bye. W why do you do this? I'm your brother. That's why I want you to understand we couldn't take revenge by revenge. Jesus, did that jerk cast a spell on you or what? Why now you still blindly trust him? It's him who made our resorts stumble. Then Nom out of the blue barged in. Who told you I harmed your family? Here you are. If not you, then who else? Isn't it you who did this to take revenge for... Keep talking. Why stop? Take revenge for what? I've already turned a blind eye and let this slide. And now you want to dig this up? Okay, fine. That's when Ronnie knew all the truth about her mom scheming on taking Nam's family's resort for her own possession. That's also the reason why that day he coldly left her without a word. N my mom? So my dad was also in on that? No, your dad is totally oblivious about that. Mr. Andrews was so kind to help us with a handsome sum to start again. He's been so nice to us, so I don't want to make a fuss. And you've known about this the whole time, but still talk about revenging? Don't you see our family as the one who should take the blame? Grayson, it's the karma we have to take. I'm so disappointed in you and mom. Nom, um, I do apologize to you for all the troubles my family has caused you and your family. I will handle this ASAP. Then Veronica asked Grayson to publicly admit his scheme and apologize to Nam. This wasn't easy for Grayson, but I know deep down, my brother isn't a bad person. Thanks to that, Nam's hotel resumed working smoothly as before. After that, Ronnie and her brother came back to the States and told the truth to their dad. What? You've been doing this behind my back the whole time? You know what? We're more brothers to each other. When I had nothing, it's him who helped to lift me up, and now you were quite evil with good? Mrs. Andrews was perplexed, as this was the first time she saw her husband this mad. She admitted her wrongdoings, and a few days later suggested they come back to Vietnam to apologize to Nam's family. And of course, they couldn't believe in what they were just told. They kept silent for a while, then... To be honest, this news is totally strange to me. But it's all the past now. Let's end here once and for all. And after everything, the siblings finally found themselves on the same side in the matter. I was about to tell you before, but not until now do I have courage. But thank you, Ronnie. You might not believe it. If it hadn't been you and the recording, I might not have been able to awake from the nightmare of revenge and then admit my wrongdoings. I was foolish to let hatred and jealousy cloud my judgments and act silly. But thanks to Nam's big heart and your righteousness, I now learn my own lessons. And hey, he might be a good brother-in-law, sis. How could it happen when our families and me alone caused too many troubles to his family and him? Two years later, now Veronica's worked for her family business as Grayson's assistant. One day, when going back to home after a tiring working day, she got a message from a strange number. What's this? This is creepy. Anyways, today is June 6th, so what? Oh my, is it... Veronica hurriedly outside to see Nam already there, holding a big bouquet. Ready? Hmm, ready. Why you suddenly... Oh no. See, what takes you so long? Oh, pardon me, princess. It's hard to find a pedalo, uh, a true dap V in the States. My most precious timekeeper. There's a saying that goes, when you fully trust someone without any doubt, you'll either have a person for life or a lesson for life. You bet I learned a valuable lesson because that quote manifested itself into my life. It was the summer of 2000, before our beloved smartphones and social media even existed. Elio, Tara, and I were exploring the glorious Barcelona. Spain was our first stop on our trip across Europe to celebrate high school graduation. That's 18-year-old me. I'd always wanted a partner who I could trust with my life and stick with me through thick and thin. But the boys I dated were too childish or selfish to be considered trustworthy, except for my sweet Elio. He's always so attentive and cared for me greatly, but somehow he couldn't ease my anxiety. At the beginning, I wanted us to have a couple's trip, but then I decided to have my only friend Tara join us, just to be safe. My treat, of course. Only Tara stayed friends with me after many other greedy leeches tried latching onto me for my family's wealth. Sure, I got you, girl. I was thinking you might just chicken out without me. Ha ha ha. She knew me too well. And so our journey began. Why Barcelona, you asked? Because I wanted to connect to my Spanish roots since my grandparents met then got married over there. Hopefully, Elio and I would be just like them. After weeks of sampling Michelin restaurants, five-star hotels, and high-end nightclubs, we visited Las Ramblas Market. And so did dozens of other tourists. Ugh, are they not seeing me intentionally? I can't suffocate between sweaty people, so I let us out of the crowd. 
Here comes fresh air. But hey, where are Tara and Elio? I reached for my phone and suddenly remembered that Elio had my handbag. My whole life's in there. My phone, my money, my passport. Ah, police! Officer! Officer, please help! I'm lost and I don't have my documents on me. But why did they keep dashing their gaze to me, then to each other? Oh, they understood me. Then they signaled me to follow them, probably to the police station. What? This is a hospital. They think I'm nuts? No, this isn't happening. What do I do? Uh, excuse me, you need help? That snapped me out of the panic attack. I turned around and saw two male supermodels. My, my. Hang on, time and place, Michaela. Turns out the guy who just approached me was Guzman. He's quite fluent in English and very friendly. Meanwhile, the cold one was Manu, who seemed to be watching me like an alien. I told them about my situation, then they led me to the U.S. Embassy. Luckily, they stayed to help me talk to the embassy staff, who I totally believe is the sloth from Zootopia in disguise. One eternity later, they said they'd help me find Elio and Tara, but it'd take several weeks. Ugh, that's it? What about me? I already told them I had neither money nor passport, right? Where do I stay? How would I survive? Right then, Guzman offered me to stay at his place and work at his family's restaurant in the meantime. Huh? Isn't that too generous to a stranger like me? These two beautiful and helpful people could be baits, but without any other option, I had to cautiously follow them. This was the first time I ever had to be on my own in a strange place, and the fact that their home was an old, slightly shabby restaurant didn't help. Mr. and Mrs. Rios, the owners, aka their parents, welcomed and fed me. I wasn't sure if the food was poisoned or not, but my rumbling tummy convinced me to blindly trust them for now. Then they showed me my room. That's nice. Perhaps a bit too nice, especially to a complete stranger. Am I going to get kidnapped like when I was five? If it wasn't for my bodyguard, I'd be living in a human trafficker's wonderland now. This room's only secured by a simple slide bolt, so I used all my strength to barricade the door <sighs> with this wardrobe. Whew, that'll do it. I couldn't sleep much and got up pretty early but it took me a while to remove my barricade and get downstairs. Ugh, scratch that. Or I might give myself scoliosis. At breakfast, they asked me how I was doing. I could only mutter a few Spanish phrases from school and prayed for my Spanish ancestors' assistance while their replies were too fast for me to comprehend. Besides, it sounded like they used a different language to communicate. Sensing my confusion, Guzman explained that people in Barcelona speak Catalan in their everyday life, not standard Spanish. Oh, right. Suddenly, I felt so alone among them. Unsurprisingly, when they opened, I was assigned dishwashing duty and organizing the storage room because I didn't speak any Catalan. Back home, I had maids and servants pick up after my every step. Literally. So working here was torture. Not to mention the hot weather here was draining me. My slow pace earned me Manu's glare, his annoyed frown, or sometimes a few words that I'm sure weren't very nice. Fortunately, Guzman was there to be the usual comic relief. I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. Tenada, you're doing your best, girl. Don't worry about that grumpy cat. Still, Manu was just one of my many problems. Everything seemed confusing, from how they tell the time to the metric system. Not to mention mealtimes in Spain were always somehow two hours late. I swear, I almost blacked out from hypoglycemia the first few days. But today, Manu suddenly demanded I take a table's order. Maybe they sensed my nervousness, so they pointed at the dish they wanted from the menu. Gazpacho and pesto pasta? Got it! Call me Bear Grill. Improvise, adapt, overcome is the way to go. A while later, I was just vibing in the kitchen when I heard a commotion outside. I ran out and realized the customer from before was coughing violently. What's happening to him? I saw Mr. Rios ran up to his date, asked a few questions, and checked his half-eaten pasta. His face suddenly turned pale, and he immediately called an ambulance. Michaela, did you, by any chance, not hear that he said he had a nut allergy? Perhaps. He told me his food should be nut-free because he's allergic, but that went over my head. Thank God the ambulance arrived on time, so he was okay. Still, Mr. Rios had to apologize, and that meal was on the house. And me... Manu gave me a piece of his mind. Why is he angry at me? He knew I didn't speak their language, yet he made me take their order. I wish I spoke Catalan so I could fire him instantly. Guess I'll have to fire myself. Adios. I was walking around aimlessly when Manu and Guzman found me. 
They said they were looking for me everywhere. Manu's awkward expression was very unlike his usual cool appearance. Sorry, you not know Catalan, I not know English. We, um, misunderstand. Go home, please, o okay? Now I knew this guy seemed cold only because he didn't speak English. Seeing their sincerity, I followed them back. But will I ever return home? What if I'll never see my friends and family again for the rest of my life? The next day, I went to the U.S. Embassy and received shocking news. Elio and Tara not only had already left Barcelona, but Spain. A week ago. Why didn't you inform me immediately when you found them? Oh, we were going to do that tomorrow. They're gone anyway. <laughs> What's so funny about that, you moron? Never mind. Burning this place down wouldn't solve anything. My world had already collapsed. What did I do to deserve this? Why am I surrounded by cruel people? My paranoia was proven right once again. I can't trust anyone but myself. I relayed the news to the Rios and asked if I could live with them longer. They reassured I could stay as long as I needed. They can't reach you now either. They couldn't have abandoned you. Maybe they were looking for a way to help you. Chin up, queen. Your tiara's gonna fall. This family's hospitality and positive energy are unmatched. Still, it saddened me that I couldn't return home just yet. A few days later, surprisingly, Manu offered me Catalan lessons. In return, I shall teach him English. He was a natural. I, on the other hand, felt like I was born with a wrong tongue. Whenever Manu got mad at me for making mistakes, I'd bombard him with questions as a distraction. Why do you use Celsius and not Fahrenheit here? Why Catalan and not Spanish? And what's up with siesta? I swear, it's like the entire city suddenly drops dead in the middle of the day. At first glance, my questions seemed to annoy Manu, but he actually answered all of them. I could see his iciness slowly melting. Time passed and my Catalan improved. Today, I even chatted with Manu's parents while working. They said this restaurant was established a few generations ago, and many troubled couples stopped by this place. But love always prevails in the end, because our food heals them all. Might sound romantic, but actually, that's because Great Granddad liked being a love guru, while Great Grandma wished to be a couples therapist. Since then, thanks to Manu and my co-workers, my life got a lot easier. Every time I messed up something, they'd offer help or guidance. One time, I got lost while delivering food and was gone for a long time. But when I got back, they didn't criticize me. One of them even joked that I didn't know the area because I rarely went out. So, Guzman suggested we three go to the beach after work. Some vitamin C sounds like what I need. Huh? But only Manu was waiting for me after our shift. It's uh, just us. Guzman's with his hot date. Guzman, you cheeky little schemer. Still, this isn't a date, right? Just two friends getting to know each other. I initially thought we're going to walk along La Rambla and arrive at Barcelonetta Beach, but Manu took me to Playa Badalona, which was a bit further away, but pretty much empty and splendid. Strange how TripAdvisor didn't mention this place. Manu brought out a bottle of cava, a Barcelona specialty. Wow, isn't it expensive? Are you sure I can have this? You worked hard and deserve to play hard. Aw, so thoughtful. He might make me blush. Then we toasted to my chaotic arrival here. Mmm, that's the stuff. With Manu, I got to see an ordinary side of Barcelona. Not often do I get the chance to be somewhere this beautiful. I should be more adapting. Besides, if I wasn't here, I'd never get to observe this magnificent monument up close. Leave room for Jesus! Jesus! I mean, Guzman? He had a terrible date and came to vent. What were you thinking, Michaela? You have a boyfriend, remember? Eventually, my life here got more enjoyable. I kinda adopted the manana mentality, so taking it slow became my motto. I now realized whoever invented siesta was a genius. People would sometimes burst into songs, as others would either sing along or dance to the music. Spaniards seem to value quality of life more than those in the States. Speaking of which, I still got homesick from time to time, and Manu's the only one who seemed to notice. You can talk to me anytime. Rest assured, we're all happy to have you here. Okay, okay, I might have a teeny tiny crush on him. No, focus, Michaela. Think about Elio, your boyfriend. I wonder how he and Tara were doing. Speak of the devil, I saw them again that evening on a TV show about tourism in Marseille, France? And they shamelessly claimed to be a couple. I couldn't believe it. 
However, without my passport, I couldn't get to them. So I asked Manu and Guzman to go there, and they agreed. Girl, don't worry. I'm more than happy to bring those traitors to justice on your behalf. No matter what had happened, I'll be eternally grateful to them, my guardian angels. They returned after a couple of days with my stuff, but Manu said those two show no remorse as they put all the blame on me. The moment I saw them, I knew those two were backpacking. Trust me, honey, they're penniless. But I still had questions, so I immediately called Tara and chaos ensued. Tara said my paranoia and stubbornness tired her out, as they did Elio. We kept it to ourselves all this time because we didn't want to hurt you. But actually, it felt like a relief to not have you around. Did you know that we bonded over shared trauma? That's you. Good. I hope you two are happy asking strangers for money together. Tara, are you talking to Michaela? Mickey, wait. I can't listen to another word. There wasn't even any tears left in me. Manu sat down next to me. Hey, you got rid of those traitors. Why the long face? I'm fine. Don't mind me. I just lost the only two people I trust outside my family. No biggie. Come now, it's not that bad. Give up! What the? Oh, oops, my bad. Don't give up. Uh, I mean, cheer up. <laughs> Don't laugh. I mean it. Since you got here, you've become a lot more uh, independent, haven't you? You're quite a strong, resilient girl. He's right, and not just because I like him. I'd been so caught up in everything that I didn't realize I'd been entrusting my life to him, who I barely knew. I'd been relying so much on him and his family. Maybe it's not so bad knowing good people still exist. And this guy, he makes it so hard for me to leave this place. At the crack of dawn, I woke up to the deafening sound of helicopters? That's my family crest. My parents must have sent those choppers. A swole guy in black came up to me and said my dad wanted me home because I'd gone AWOL for far too long. Then he just grabbed me and we flew straight back to America. I begged him to turn around so I could say goodbye to Manu, Guzman, Mr. and Mrs. Rios, my saviors. But my pleading was completely ignored. I was finally home and went to college, but as a different person, I was determined to socialize more and befriend new people. And no, it's not just talks. I actually moved into the dorm to be surrounded by my peers. It's been a long time coming, but I learned to open up and keep my trust issue in check. I shouldn't pass up on companionship out of irrational fears. However, I couldn't take my mind off Manu. We didn't even properly say goodbye and had no way to contact one another. So I went back to Barcelona to look for him. But when I got there, his family said he'd just gone to the airport. Turns out, he went looking for me too. I immediately got in a taxi and headed to the airport. As soon as I arrived, I saw the earliest flight to America had already taken off. That's how my time abroad wrapped up. Michaela, mi amor, where are you? Yes, my love. That photo album again. I'm right here, eyes on me. Well, I couldn't figure out why you didn't board that flight. I just had a feeling that I'd see you again if I turned around. Call it telepathy. Hi, Ashley here, a superstar in the making. At least I was until the accident happened and I was left with a scar. With a huge audition coming up, my manager boyfriend Callum persuaded me to get my twin sister, Bridget, to pose on stage as me. She took on the glitzy parts of my life while I stayed in the background and recorded at the studio with David, my grumpy but talented music producer. It was only supposed to be until my scar healed, but then the doctor told me the devastating news. The scar was here to stay. Upset, I went around to Callum's for support and saw him there with Bridget. They were leaning in to kiss. I couldn't believe my sister and my boyfriend would do this to me. So with rage swirling through me, I karate kicked open the door and barged inside to confront the conniving snakes. How could you? My boyfriend and my own sister. He's your boyfriend? I, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. No, you did nothing wrong. I fell for her first, Ashley. Can you blame me? She's a flawless superstar. You'd understand because you used to be her. At least until you crumbled. I was freaking hit by a car, you douchebag. But it didn't matter to him at all. That's when it hit me. Callum never loved me. I was just a tool to him. You can't trust him, Bridget. It's only a matter of time before he decides you're no use to him anymore and ditches you, just like what he's doing to me right now. And I'm going to make sure the whole world knows what a jerk he is. 
Callum suddenly lunged towards me, then aggressively dragged me out of the house. You think you can threaten me with a big mouth? Who's going to believe you, huh? You're just a shadow of Bridget, a flawed, pathetic version of her. So get lost. You, you'll never get away with this. Just you wait and see. Days later, I was still hung up on his cruel words, but I had to do something to take back what's mine. So I spent ages covering my scar with makeup, then showed up at an event I was supposed to attend. I confidently strutted up to the entrance. Whoa, whoa. Nice try, Ashley. But the scar gives you away. Try Kylo Ren next time. <laughs> that stung. Feeling hopeless, I started walking, and my feet unconsciously led me to the studio. I turned on the lights and played my previous records. Surprisingly, my singing had improved one by one. So I turned up the song volume and sang and danced along. I was busting some crazy dance moves when I suddenly heard clapping. I didn't know you've got the groove. Come to think of it, I've never seen you this happy before. You have no idea what I've been through. I felt safe around him, so before I could stop myself, I blurted out what had happened. He insisted on taking me somewhere fun to cheer me up. Turns out David's fun place is the super cool Japanese fair. We shared some huge rainbow cotton candy and lit sparklers and drew musical notes in the air. Then, as we walked past a stall with some fantastically colorful masks, I stopped dead and stared at them. Hey, I have an idea. I should start a new singing career wearing a cool mask. I mean, it's not the most original idea since Sia and Marshmallow have already done it, but I can hide my face and Callum wouldn't even notice to stop me. That's actually a great idea. Hmm, here, this one looks cute on you. Holy cow, red alert, red alert. You're falling for this charming, handsome, talented music producer guy. It's on me, by the way. Consider it a lucky charm, okay? For sure, I swooned and was motivated to create a YouTube channel right away, starring me singing with my mask on and used Vixie as my stage name. At first, I only covered other artists' songs, but as my confidence and following grew, I began singing the songs David helped me write. Although the netizens quickly spotted the similarities between my voice and Bridget's pre-recordings, they're both mine. But the difference is, one uses a ton of auto-tune and one does not. Then, one by one, I released more songs, and over the course of a few months, my channel grew to over 1 million subscribers. For the first time in my life, people actually saw me for my musical talents, not for the way I looked. So, to thank them, David and I spent weeks in the studio composing a special song called Thistle's Bloom to release on Valentine's Day. Then one day, David was invited to the Grand Gala, which was a massive event full of the hottest stars, and he took me along with him. The party went off to a great start, and everyone was so complimentary about my music. I was dancing alone while David talked business with some music producer. But then, Bridget suddenly appeared and tried talking to me. Vixie, hi! I love your look! I ignored her and went to leave, when suddenly I got this itchy feeling in my throat, and I felt my face begin to swell. I looked down and gasped when I saw pecans inside my muffin. Oh no! I'm allergic to pecan! I ran to the toilet and took off the mask to catch my breath when the bathroom door snapped open and in walked Bridget. Come on, Ash, I already knew it was you. Sorry, guys, <laughs> the door seems to be stuck. She slammed the door shut and went trying to help me. I didn't want her help, but I didn't have much choice. I put my mask back on and let her place her jacket around my shoulders and sneak me out of there. She got her driver to pick us up around the back of the building and take me home. Then she made sure I took my allergy medicine. Don't expect me to thank you for this. No, I... <sighs> After you left Callum's house, he told me you gave up singing for me and that you gave us your blessing. But when I saw videos of Vixie going viral, I instantly knew it was you, and he'd lied to me. Yeah, he's good at doing that. I feel really bad for what happened, so I want to make it right. I'll give you back your place as a singer. You're serious? Absolutely! I was so relieved you hadn't given up on your passion. You have no idea how amazing you sound. Actually, I do, but I can't take all the credit. David helped me produce the song, and we're actually releasing it this Valentine. Really? I can't wait to hear it. Fine, you can hear the demo if you want. She loved the song, and I had to admit, it felt good having my twin back. A few days later, I was fully recovered from my allergy attack and feeling excited about my big song reveal. But then I went on my laptop and saw that Bridget had released a new song, Thistle Bloom, my song! I immediately called Bridget to find out what was going on. 
Surprised, weren't you? Now you know how I feel. I've always been inferior to you. It's about time you be the loser. Oh, and BTW, Callum and I are officially dating. He picked me over you. So did your fans. <laughs> they definitely won't be fooled. I'll show them the truth. I went online and insisted that the song was my work. But not only did the netizens not believe me, but they also wanted me canceled. This Ashley wannabe is so tragic. I always thought this masked girl was sketchy. She thought she was so sleek stealing Ashley's song. I had to watch my subscriber count take a nosedive. All my hard work had gone to waste. I turned my phone off and just sat in a dark room wishing I was beautiful again. Maybe people would believe me then. Suddenly, the door opened and in walked David. You've been ignoring my calls and messages, so I came to see if you were okay. Seems you're not. No, I'm hideous and now my career is over. Your career isn't over because of how you look. Can't you see? You're very talented and you're all set to become a great artist. That's why Bridget is so jealous and insecure. She has to steal your work. So, people still believe Bridget because she's beautiful. No one wants to believe in this sketchy, masked girl who's too afraid to show her scarred face. Look, I can't hear most of the words you just said, but all I know is you can't let a minor setback like this stop you from doing what you love. He then took something out of his ears. Hang on, were they hearing aids? My hearing started deteriorating when I was 15. When I told everyone I wanted to work in the music industry, they all thought I was Delulu. But five years later, and look at me now. Of course, it was hard for me too, but I never let my disadvantage get in the way of my dream. You, you really did it! Sorry, what you say? Oh, that actually made a lot of sense. If David could overcome this and continue to compose and produce amazing music, then I could overcome my body image issues and become a real singer in my own right and under my name. I started by snooping around my old fan pages and found out that Bridget was going to hold a press conference for the release of her latest album and perform Thistle Bloom. I devised a plan to get there before she did, and that includes David puncturing his own car tire and getting Bridget and her team caught in traffic. On the press conference's stage, I was shaking like crazy, but as soon as I heard the audience chanting my name, I knew I could do this. I stepped on stage, and while the crowd was too stunned to react, I quickly started performing an acoustic version of Thistle Bloom, and the crowd went quiet. I could see it in their eyes. They were moved. Then the screen behind me lit up and played a video of me and David working on the song. When my performance ended, the audience erupted in applause. I was overwhelmed with joy, but then a reporter suddenly stood up and asked, Are you the masked singer, Vixie? What are you doing here instead of Ashley? I knew this was my moment of truth, so I took a deep breath, then removed my mask. I'm actually the real Ashley. The audience gasped in shock. Buzzling started spreading. I got the scar from a car accident. I was so hungry for fame, but believed I could never make it as a star with a scar. So I asked my twin sister, Bridget, to take my place. I'm sorry that we deceived you like that, and I promise that from now on, I will always stay true to myself, scar or no scar. Then I stepped down from the stage and walked past Bridget, who was trying to escape the reporters. She looked around and called Callum's name for help, but in typical Callum style, he was trying to blend into the crowd. Ashley, was the twin swapping plan your idea? No, it was actually my ex-manager's, aka cheating ex-boyfriend's idea, wasn't it, Callum? I watched him look mortified as they swarmed around him. <laughs> it seems like he's going to have a hard time with his career in the future. That's karma for you. Then I strolled out of there with David waiting at the door, leaving all the buzzing behind me. I started living my life just the way I wanted and no longer cared what Bridget and Callum were up to. Then one day, I was driving home from the studio when I saw Bridget surrounded by some thugs. I called the police and then made sure she was okay. Turns out, mom was in debt and the collectors were now forcing Bridget to pay up. My life's a failure. I tried to be you to escape this pathetic reality, but got carried away and wanted to replace you. I don't have any excuse for my actions. Just punish me however you want. I stayed silent for a while, then eventually decided to drive her home. It made sense now. Bridget despised me because she'd spent years suffering with mom, while I had a privileged, happy life with dad. I felt bad for her, because after all, she's just a victim of mom's neglect. So, I used the money Bridget had made while being me to pay off mom's debt, and then I spoke to dad and arranged for her to move in with us. Things aren't perfect between us, but we're getting there. She's still super shy and moody, but she's doing a lot better than she was. 
I learned to accept the scar on my face and became a real singer. I may not be a household name, but I guess I'm pretty famous and also an inspiration to young girls who feel self-conscious about the way they look. And you know what? I'm happy with that. Best of all, I now have a cute, kind, loving, albeit grouchy at times, boyfriend. David. We even opened a music company that judged our clients on their talent, not their appearance. I was cuddled up next to David watching the news when the reporter said there was a groundbreaking new scar treatment available. Do you still want to remove your scar? No, as it's now a part of me. Hello there, my name is Hope. And my life just became fabulous. My parents are from India, and they moved here when my mom was pregnant with me. Things were tough when I was a baby. But when I turned seven, everything changed. My father invented the super cool app that lets you detect diseases from your phone. So we became rich and moved to Beverly Hills. Kana, look, that mansion over there belongs to Rihanna. Oh my god, Rihanna is my neighbor for real? Eek! Man, Beverly Hills was paradise. But there was one little problem. I had no friends. We moved during the summer, so I had to wait three months to meet the kids at my new school. I was bored out of my mind in our mighty mansion. One day, I decided to go to the playground. There were so many kids playing and having fun. I tried to approach some of them, but they paid me no mind. So I decided to watch them instead from the top of the jungle gym. Hey, you there! Me? Duh! Who else is flipping around like a monkey up there? Um... Are you new? We're playing princesses! Come and play with us! Yes! I jumped down so fast I almost hurt myself. But that was how I met Meg and Becky. I was shocked to find out that Becky was my neighbor. Our houses were right next to each other, and I could literally talk to her from my balcony. Meg, on the other hand, lived at the end of the street, so we decided to meet up every afternoon and play till the sunset. Then school finally started, and we were an iconic trio. Becky was the prettiest girl, with blonde hair and teeth so perfect she didn't need braces. Meg was the cheeky, sporty one, a soccer prodigy, in her words, while I was the mysterious new girl, who was friends with two of the most popular girls in school. And things stayed great as we entered high school together. I was no longer the mysterious new girl. Popularity wasn't my thing anyway. I was just glad I found my place in the tech club. Hey, Hope! Meg's asking us to go to the mall this afternoon. You coming? Oh, I can't. My family's celebrating Diwali today. Diwali? That sounds exciting. Can I come? Um, we have never had non-Indians for Diwali before. But since you're my bestest friend, I doubt that my mom would mind. Yay! By the way, I have something for you. Here, whenever we're close, it will glow like this. Whoa! Did you make these? See, you're really talented. If you would, Becky, we've talked about this. Joining the tech club is enough for me. Now let's get going before my mom scolds us both. Becky came over immediately, and she was so excited. She helped us set up and helped me wear my sari, and even joined in the prayers. Everyone was happy to have her around. Diwali went great. My mother had the best time teaching Becky about the Indian culture. Later that evening, a heavy rain started, so Becky stayed for the night. We were having tea in the living room when I heard a loud bang on the door. I opened up, and it was Meg, soaked in the rain. Oh my god, Meg, are you okay? Becky said to wait for you guys at the park. I was waiting when the rain started. I went to her place and was told she was here all day. Why didn't you tell me? Oh no, Meg, I'm so sorry. I meant to text you, but I forgot. You forgot? We've been friends since we were in diapers, but the moment Hope showed up, you abandoned me. That's not true. What's that on your wrist? Hope's too? They're friendship bracelets. I can make you one if you want. So that's how you think of me all this time. Just a surplus? Meg, wait. She didn't stop, but walked straight into the rain, and everything changed from that day. We tried to make peace with her at school, but she acted like we were invisible for days, and even started a new clique with her soccer teammates. Poor Becky. She seemed so hurt. Well, well, if it isn't the lovebirds. Tell me, Becky, how does it feel being replaced? Hurt, right? We get it. You find new friends. No need to rub it in our faces. Ah, uh, Hope. Have you been shopping at Goodwill again? Are things good at home? I think the homeless person you borrowed this coat from needs it back. Remind us, Meg, does your mommy still need you to cut meat into little pieces before you eat? That was four years ago. How dare you? Was it? What about those bed accidents? Her minions cracked up. Even Becky couldn't contain her giggling. From that day on, Meg was determined to get on our backs. We figured out she must have been mad at us still, so we decided to keep distance every time we saw her. I finally got time for myself, but suddenly Becky came rushing in. Hope, I just saw the tech teacher put a sign-up sheet for the annual national tech competition. And guess what? I already signed you up. This is the year you'll kill it. Bex, you should have done that. I'm not ready. That competition is a cutthroat. What if I don't make it past the group stage? Well, you know what's worse? Not showing up at all. So you have to give it your all and create something. You can do it, Hope. 
No, you don't- Hello, ladies. Yuck. You again? Can't you see we're in the middle of a conversation, Charles? I'm not speaking to you. Hi, Hope. I saw your name on the sign-up. I know you're going to kill it. Stalker alert. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Even though I am doing this against my will. If you want, I could help you brainstorm. No, I'm good. I I'll figure it out. When would you learn? Even if she was on fire and you were the last drop of water, she would still say no. Move on. You've been obsessed with her since middle school. It's not cute anymore. Becky, that's mean. Let's go. Becky later apologized to me and said she only wanted to help. Besides, the winner gets the prize of a whopping $80,000. I bawled my eyes out at the amount of zeros. That's it. I decided to give it my all for this one. I was working all night on designs, which made me so tired and cranky at school. But so far, I had nothing. One day, I overslept and was so late to school. I was running to catch the end of first period when I felt an arm grab me. Hey, are you okay? You look exhausted. I'm fine. Stop following me around, Charles. No, I don't want to hang out with you. No, I don't like you. Please leave me alone. Just then, the bell rang, so the hallway was filled with students, and they all heard what I said. Everyone was laughing at Charles. Tell him, bestie. We don't like you, Charles. Scram! I was about to apologize when he walked away in shame. Maybe it was for the best? I was getting tired of rejecting him every day. I had too much to work on. I had an idea for an app and knew that my family depended on it. In no time, I stopped worrying and started feeling confident. My app was indeed a masterpiece. One day at recess, I was in the bathroom stall when I heard the most disturbing things. Did you hear the thing about Hope? I heard that her father's app is a failure now and that they're so poor they might have to live in trailers soon. Yeah, I heard it. Who would have thought that high and mighty Hope used to live in a trailer? How tragic. <laughs> My head was spinning. My family problems were a secret. Who could have told them? That witch Meg? There's no way she would have known. Then it hit me. It was Becky. She was the one coming to my house all the time. That's why she enrolled me into this competition for the money. She knew. I could feel the anger boiling in me as I moved to find her. I saw her by the bleaches, sitting alone. Great. Becky, how could you? Before I could finish my sentence, a slap landed on my face. It stung so bad that I couldn't see. Don't ever come close to me again! Don't ever say my name! I don't ever want to see you again! What are you talking about? Ugh, I'm the one who should say that! You're seriously playing the victim after insulting me? She ripped her friendship bracelet off, threw it at me, and stormed off. The whole school watched as I stood in confusion. What the heck just happened? I tried to reach out to Becky, but it was impossible. She'd cut me off. Was that how little she thought of our friendship? The next few days at school, everything started to make sense. Becky had a new best friend, and it was none other than Meg. I was so upset watching them at school, while I sat alone every day. Later that day, I was in gym class when the witch approached me. Looks like you're flying solo now. Jesus, gloat all you want. I'm out. What's with that attitude? You usually have a sharper tongue. Cut your nonsense. I know you did this. You were so jealous of our friendship that you just had to destroy it. What? It wasn't me. Have you seen the video? What video? Meg showed me a video of me bad-mouthing Becky to a group of girls, but I didn't do this. I know. As much as I hate you, I know you'll never say anything bad about Becky, which means that someone did you dirty. Oh, I didn't expect you to pick my side, but you're so right. That person must have spread that nasty rumor about my dad's business and got me thinking Becky was responsible, since she must have been the only one who knew. Does this mean it's true? Yeah, I've been hoping to win the tech competition prize and help that out. Well then, you should focus on the competition. I'll talk it out to Becky, don't worry. You do that for me? Yeah, I guess I knew all too well what it felt like to be left out. I'm really sorry about that. It's alright. Beck and I made up. I guess I was a bit jealous, since it was always you and Becky. And we've never had a chance to hang out one-on-one -on -one either. I really hope all these drama can end so we could just be the iconic trio again. Thank you. I really hope so too. One week later, the tech competition was finally here. I was so ready to unveil what I had been working on. Mom and Dad were also here to cheer me on. I walked to write my name on the sign-up sheet, and the name before mine shocked me to my core. That's right. I'm here too. Oh, meet Evans, my partner. He's one of the most brilliant inventors. My parents hired him to help take you down. But why? Why? I've been nothing but nice to you, but you only think of me as some dumb blonde. I was the one who enrolled you into this competition. I was the one who befriended you. You'd be nothing if it wasn't for me. It's about time you learn to appreciate your friend. Becky turned away. Meg tried to stop her, but to no use. I suddenly felt this weakness in my knees. I couldn't help the tears. I let them flow freely. Oh, Kana. Listen, you have to focus. 
Remember why you are here. If we have to start our lives afresh, then no problem. I did it before, and I can do it again. Don't let her clouded judgment tell you where you belong, my darling. I gave my dad the biggest hug and went into the hall. He was right. I couldn't let Becky take this day away from me and my family. When my name was called, I walked proudly on stage and started my presentation. Hi all, I came here because I want to tell my story. Growing up, life hasn't always been easy for me, until I found friends who changed my life. And even if there are ups and downs along the way, I will forever cherish the memories we have together. So I came up with this idea of an app called Memoir Lens, made only for you and your loved ones, where you can store and share your memorable moments with them. Best part is the app will notify you annually, so you can relive those moments again. The hall erupted with applause. Everyone loved my app and I ended up winning the competition. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. I saved my family. Later that night, my home was packed with friends and family celebrating. I was having such a good time. But then, the thought of Becky and Meg crossed my mind. So, I took a walk. I was just at the end of the street when Charles appeared from nowhere. Hey, I heard you won today. Congratulations. And you're having a party. Did you forget to invite me? Oh, um, it's just for my family and close ones, so... Oh, <laughs> I get it. Does Becky come too? I heard she slapped you in the face. Ouch, that must have hurt coming from your BFF for life. Do you see how it feels now? Nobody likes being humiliated. Wait a minute, it was you! You did this! Of course I did, moron. And let's be clear, it wasn't because I was so heartbroken. Yuck. I just wanted to date a popular girl. And you seemed... Easy. But then you humiliated me. So I created a fake AI video saying nasty things about you with Becky's face. And the same for her. And you guys fell for it. Look how weak and powerless you are without your friend. Pathetic. <laughs> with all the anger and pain I felt, I grabbed Charles by his shirt and slapped him silly. I was ready to beat him up, but he scampered away, laughing like a psychopath. I ran to Becky's house. I had to tell her the truth. I banged on the door for minutes before she opened it. <laughs> it was Charles! He made a fake video to separate us because we humiliated him! What? Are you making this up to mend things? It's not gonna work. It's over. No, wait! She's not lying! I heard Charles confess. I even have it recorded. They happened to stand right in front of my house. Becky watched the video, and it started to hit her. Oh my god, that idiot! Oh, Hope, I'm so sorry. I should have listened to your side. And I said all those terrible things to you. Oh, I'm too ashamed of myself to even face you. It's okay, Becky. I just miss my friend. I also happen to know you pulled out of the competition because you couldn't do that to me and my family. I'm so sorry I even tried to. Then we both laugh away. Hey, Meg, why are you standing there dumbfounded? It feels like I'm third willing, you guys. I'm just gonna head out so you guys can have your moment. What are you talking about? Meg, you're a part of this group, and this time we're not gonna let you leave. Yeah, if it wasn't for you, we'd probably still be fighting by now. So come here, you. I missed you guys. I'm sorry I was so mean. It's okay now. Now, how do we make that punny Charles pay? <laughs> <laughs> no one told me it's this windy up here. I'll probably be wiped off of Earth before I could wipe all these windows. It's okay, Harper. Remember, you're doing this for Aaron. Just a bit of tough work for now, but imagine the incredible time you'll be having at the concert. Imagine... Oh my god! Aaron! And her? Hold up, let's start from the top. Hi, I'm Harper, the biggest fan of the greatest boy band, The Statics, especially their rapper Aaron. I turned 18 not long ago, and I'm taking a gap year to find my true passion. To be honest, I'm not really interested in anything. The only thing that makes me feel alive right now is fangirling, following my boys around, concerts, touring, etc. But after months of that, I'm totally broke. Not to mention Aaron's having his solo debut album. So, having no choice, I asked my super sweet boyfriend Kirk to lend me some money. But, again, all you ever did was spend relentlessly on this trash. You don't study, nor get a job. How are you expecting to afford it all? Do these idols feed you or give you a roof over your head? I don't think so. I can't help you forever either. Trash? He called my passion trash? Excuse me, I asked for a loan. Not like I was robbing him. He wasn't like this the other times. Finally showing his true self, huh? Fine, I don't need an unsupportive boyfriend. Anyone that stands between me and my happiness can get lost. So, we're over. Whatever. But wait, I still need to come inside. As Kyra's bestie, not as your girlfriend. You might be wondering what kind of relationships I have going on here. Well, I actually befriended Kyra first. We were both ecstatic. Fandom of the statics. If you know, you know. Fangirls bond is stronger than any friendship. 
Her mom works for a big press, so she sometimes could even get us access to shows. Cool, right? So I was always around her place. One thing led to another. Me and her brother fell in stupid love, but not anymore. Have you heard about Aaron's new album? Apparently, it will be followed by a group concert right downtown New York. We can ask Kirk to give us a ride. It will be super fun. Oh, don't want to burst your bubble, but I just broke up with Kirk. Four minutes, 36 seconds ago? No way! Yes way! I told her how ridiculous her brother was, but she's still trying to find excuses for him, hoping to mend us back together. But sorry, this heart of mine has casted the dice. It's entirely dedicated to Aaron now. No more, dumb boyfriend. And that's how I ended up taking on this dangerous job. Its high salary could get me boxes of albums and a concert ticket even. But what am I getting instead? My beloved idol arms in arms with a singer I hate the most on earth, Bianca. Aaron and Bianca rushed to the window and dragged me inside. Please don't let anyone know this. What do you want? Autograph? VIP ticket? Please, you probably know our two fandoms are like water and oil. They already opposed us so badly over a collab last time. Yeah, of course I know, because I was the one who opposed. Seriously, what does Erin see in this girl? She always says controversial stuff, gets caught in dating rumors with all guys on Earth, parties 24-7, and her songs suck. But on a second thought, it's not every day to have the two hottest celebrities on their knees before me like this. Maybe I should act wisely. Either way, this is the lifetime opportunity for me stepping into Erin's life, isn't it? Okay, I'll keep a secret on one condition. Let me be the manager of Bianca. Bianca's manager? Who's looking for me? Wait, who are you? But he didn't even bother to wait for my answer and started stacking out bunches of stuff for Bianca to sign. Being a manager ain't a joke. See, Will's been doing this for years and still struggling. Well then, more reason for me to step in. So I walked over to give him a hand. This poster is mid. Next time, let me handle it. Trust me, I've designed countless stuff for fan events. The title track this time is a bop, but without a good promotion, it turned into a flop. I suggest you make some TikTok challenge for it. I'm a girl Bianca's age. I for sure understand her and the fans more than you. I'll be useful. Right, guys? Y- yeah, sure. She has a point, Will. You do need an assistant. Right then, Will had a phone call. Seemed urgent. After hanging up, he turned to me. Fine. It's true that I'm overloaded. I have to check stuff at the venue right now, but Bianca has schedules at the radio station in an hour. Can you get her there? Sir, yes, sir. Just like that, I helped Will around, and it's safe to say I was basically Bianca's sub-manager. Life was pretty sweet. I got to tag along to shows for free while keeping an eye on my love rival. I sure enjoyed playing God with my new puppet. Everything Bianca eats has to get my approval. Bye-bye, yummy tacos and burgers. She's only allowed to use the phone at certain times of the day. Stop texting boys and start working on your terrible music, honey. Then tell those annoying boys to stop bothering me. Even her sleep is strictly fixed, just because I love seeing her suffer. <laughs> And I make sure her schedule is packed. Vocal training, dance practice, filming content. Girl, you have a lot to work on. But on days where she worked with aesthetics, I'd let her off a little. Still, that doesn't mean these two could flirt under my nose. Seriously, it's like you guys are begging to get caught. Think about your future. This dumb fling won't matter a bit the day your career is on the edge of failing, won't it? <laughs> I'd make a good manager, right? But I occasionally saw Liam, another member of Statics, being way too chatty with Bianca. Well, as long as it's not my Aaron. But I know someone who wouldn't like this. Kyra, as Liam's her bias. (laughs) I guess the rumors are true. Liam is a playboy. And to prevent Aaron from getting caught in the same thing, I accidentally arranged Bianca's schedule to be 100% off with Aaron's, so they couldn't meet up. But Bianca still asked me to bring him gifts often, and surprisingly, Aaron wasn't too upset about his girlfriend not showing up. I guess I can get him in another level that Bianca couldn't. We soon talk a lot and hang out also, and he literally blurted out about how Bianca was so uptight, how some of her annoying habits gave him the ick, and that being with me was so much more comfortable. Uh Uh-oh, sounds like love's fading. (laughs) On the other hand, Bianca was extra upset that they still couldn't date on their anniversary. Not on me, though. Aaron himself didn't want to see her and made excuses about how paparazzi had been up in his grill because he's been doing so well lately. But Bianca has had enough with this all. She wanted to go public. I heard her talking to Aaron on the phone about it. No, that's not gonna happen. I have to be a step ahead. I immediately searched for a photo, then posted it anonymously on a fan forum. If Aaron goes public with anyone, it's gotta be me. 
But, oh boy, maybe I've not thought this through. What was I even thinking? The next day, the internet went crazy, and it's all negative comments. Thankfully, Aaron's side has spoken up and calmed it down by fabricating a story about how this was from a long time ago. And it was his first love, blah, blah. Anything, as long as things go down. I haven't even finished my sigh of relief, then out of nowhere, Aaron's stomping into our studio looking furious. R.I.P. me. Bianca, have you lost your mind? I told you I did not agree. Why did you post our photo? Are you trying to sabotage me? Sorry that you don't have a career so you can act careless all you want. But I do. I have my reputation and an army of stupid fangirls to please. I was frozen, as well as Bianca. Right then, a call came from Kyra. I swiftly sneaked out to take it. It's you, right? The lucky girl in the photo? I can tell by just one look. Last time we talked, you only mentioned seeing Bianca in real life or something. When did Aaron come into the picture? How could you not tell me? I was dumbfounded. Didn't know how to handle this. I mumbled out a few words so Kyra would keep this a secret and that we'd talk later. Okay, gotcha. But then help me meet my Liam, please. What? No, trust me, he's a player. They all are. Get over him. So Kyra recognized me that easily. But why Aaron didn't? He even mistook me with his so-called girlfriend, Bianca. That picture was also taken at the secret balcony of his penthouse that he swore he'd never taken anyone there before. Having too much on my mind, I wandered to his place, but ran into... Liam? He's talking to a girl. She wiped her tears, then left. I should get going. Don't want to mess with another player right now. Harper! What? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone about that 400th girlfriend of yours. Correct, it's the 400th girlfriend, but not of mine. Turns out, that girl's also a victim of Aaron the Heartbreaker, not Liam. Liam has always been the one who's cleaning after his mess, making sure the girls are all right and won't do anything harmful to the band's reputation. Probably that's why the public labeled me as the player. I always got caught up with these heartbroken girls. <laughs> and now you... What do you mean? I'm okay. Come on, I know you also got tangled in Aaron's love web. I'm sorry, I could have warned you earlier. I've been trying to hint it to Bianca, but the girl was too head over heels for him. I felt so stupid for thinking I could live that fantasy of being Aaron's girl so easily. All this time, we all blindly put Aaron on a pedestal, while letting Liam be wrongly accused of all the things he never did. Through Liam, I found out that the Statics has been having a problem. Aaron wanted to leave the group because he thought they were a burden and he'd do better on his own. But the rest knew that it would break the fans hard if one of them left, so they've compromised by letting Aaron have a solo album while still staying with the group. Oh no, kick that jerk out now. As a representative of Ecstatic, I can assure you that we won't be sad if we know what an awful person he is. We'll show him the door. Glad to hear that. Now, about Bianca, do you know how to break this to her in the best way? It's hard, but ugly truth is the only way. So the next day, we went to see Bianca together, told her all about how much of a jerk Aaron is, all the girls he's been seeing, all the bad-mouthing about her, he said. Surprisingly, she took it better than we thought. Thank you, too, for looking out for me. I know, I know he's bad, but I thought I'd been able to change him. But yesterday, when he came throwing a fit at me, I realized that I deserved better. Oh, poor Bianca. I really owe her a zillion apologies. I asked Liam to give us a minute and came clean to her on everything. On the photo I posted, on how I intentionally got in between the relationship, on my dumb rules just to get the better of her. I'm truly sorry. I'm just a Tolulu fangirl after all. I'm really sad to hear that because at some point I did consider you a friend, especially your ridiculous roles. It helped me a lot. Look, you kept me on a strict diet, helped me get a healthy sleep schedule, made me practice more, stay off my phone, no more doom scrolling and obsessing over hateful comments. I can assure that you've helped me become a better artist and human overall, even though it's by accident. You are seriously too nice. How come I spent all these years hating on you? I'm sorry, and I don't think I should be around here anymore. I'd better go back to my normal life. Take care, Bianca. Bianca gave me a tight hug and said that she hoped I'd still come to her concert next week, as she'd perform the dance number we created together. Mm-hmm. Liam was nice enough to accompany me to Bianca's concert. I did ask Kyra if she wanted to come along, but she was all cranky. Bianca's concert? Are you an ecstatic anymore, Harper? She's our enemy. <laughs> kiddo. If only she could see past the hate. She could have met her Liam now. The show was going on smoothly. Bianca perfected our dance routine. I was so proud. But as she went to get ready for the next song, a strange VCR got played. I'm a selfish fanatic. A friend's betrayal. A gold digger. A Delulu. And on screen were pictures of me. No! Is this why Bianca insisted I come? Is this her paying back? Or is this Aaron's? Or Liam's? Suddenly, Bianca on the mic snapped me out of the panic attack. Uh, <clears throat> 
And I'm all the worst things without your love. Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite track for my second album, Here's Without You. Everyone cheered loudly, but a voice behind me took me aback. No, guys, that's not what the video is about. The lunatic is here. This one, Har- Oh my God, Liam, I- Liam quickly shushed her and we dragged her outside. Turned out my dearest sister from another mother did this to me. Why? I hate you. I know everything now. Don't forget who I am. Nothing in this fandom could be hidden from me. You got to befriend the boys, but ghosted me because you want them all to yourself, huh? After everything we've been through, all the shows my mom helped you get in, you bewitched Aaron, sided with Bianca, then called my Liam a player. But look who you're with now. On top of that, you dumped my brother for a stupid reason. The player here is you. This is a mess, and it's really my fault. I should have filled Kyra in on everything sooner. Seeing her right now reminds me of the exact same person I was just last week. The same hot-headed, immature fan. I couldn't blame her. I apologized and told her everything. And with her dearest Liam's help, Kyra, though still mad, started to be more understanding. I love you, and I hope you will soon see things the way I do now. Idols are also humans. They're not all glitters and gold, so we can't expect them to be all perfect, then refuse to see their wrongdoings, or nitpicking trivial things just because it's not up to our expectations. Let's both be a better ecstatic from now, okay? It's been six months since then. I can say that things are definitely for the better now. It's the first performance of the static since they parted ways with Aaron after his real face got exposed. Yes, that happened. Now look, it seems like the crowd has no problem with dumping that troublemaker either. And me? Normally I'd be here as an ecstatic, but not today. I'm now working part-time while studying to get proper certification on talent management. I realized that I did enjoy working with Bianca and I actually had a knack for it, so I'm going to make a career out of it. Now, excuse me, guys. May I get my manager back? It's showtime. Bye! I and Pearl were playing our favorite, playing Disney princess. You have to be the princess this time, Ruby. We're gonna make a perfect elf and Anna. No, I'm going to be your knight, fighting all the bad guys and protecting you, milady. Then a maid knocked on the door with a phone in her hands. That might be my parents. Ruby, the school called again. How on earth could you get all these words spelled wrongly? What kind of nurse is spelled with a Z? I am really trying. It's all right, Bay. Studying isn't for everyone, and she might be of a sport type. Sweet Pea, could you just try a little more next time? Good girl. We have to go now. Bye. I know you can do this. You just need to keep practicing. You're perfect, just the way you are. Hi everyone, I'm Ruby, and this is my little sister, Pearl. Since my parents were always away for business trips, it's always just been me and her, growing up together. You already know I was terrible at studying, but Pearl was nothing like me. She was a genius. What are you doing, Pearl? For God's sake, it's 6 a.m. The sun is still sleeping, and you should be sleeping too. Absolutely not. Today is my first day in high school, and I have to make a good impression. My streak must continue. Straight A since 2015, I know, I know. As if your valedictorian title isn't impressive enough. I might be Ruby, the dumb kid who couldn't read half of a word, but it doesn't matter, because now I am Ruby, the awesome soccer captain. Yes! Go, Ruby! That's my sister, everyone! I led the school soccer team to win multiple trophies, and I also aimed at the varsity scholarship myself. Studying was still a nightmare, but I gradually accepted that I wasn't born for studying, but for soccer. So, all was well. So, that morning, I was walking with Pearl on her first day at school, when Beth and her clique approached us. Hey, Ruby, ready to flunk your junior year? Aw, oh, Beth, still salty because coach left you on the bench yesterday? My advice for you would be to learn how to actually play soccer. Unfortunately, some of us have other things going on to focus on, like our brains. Oh, oops, you don't have one. You can't understand. Sorry. <laughs> Boo-hoo, funny. That's Beth on my soccer team who always messed with me like everyone else. But all's good now, as I had my dear sister studying in the same school as me. Uh, sis, I found my class. I have to go now. Bye. The next day at school, we had a new English teacher. Ruby Walker, could you read the summary on page 10? Oh, screwed. Oh, dear. Is that your thinking face? Didn't know you were capable of that. Sorry, teacher, but she can't read. <laughs> you know what? My thoughts today on the book can be summarized into the classic song by the amazing Taylor Swift. So the haters gonna hate, 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 but I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake it, it off, shake, shake it, it off. off.
Just then, the entire class was in a frenzy, and everyone was singing, dancing, like they were in the Eras Tour. The teacher was so upset and tried to calm everyone down, but I was sent to the principal's office immediately. First trouble in the junior, huh, Ruby? Listen, both you and I know how much you mean to the team, but unfortunately, it is not enough anymore. New district laws state that students must average at least C-minus to be eligible for the varsity scholarship. What? But I'm the most qualified for it! I am sorry, but until you can move grades from whatever it is right now to a C-minus, you're off the team to focus more on your studying. Beth is now our candidate for the scholarship, and she'll take over your place. Beth? That girl who scored just five goals all season when I had scored 20? The world was really getting crazy. No way was I going to watch my passion get taken away from me that easily. I'm going to study hard. Right! I'm going to ask Pearl to tutor me. Ah, speak of the devil. Hi, Pearl. You know her. I heard she's kicked out of the soccer team because she's too dumb. Oh, no. Uh, no. How scandalous if our valedictorian did. <laughs> well, maybe now wasn't a good time. That night, I dozed off at my desk writing four words over and over again. I am not dumb. The news had spread that I got kicked off the team because of my grades, and the kids at school were vicious with their insults. Like I didn't have enough issues already, Pearl started to avoid me like a plague, as if she's ashamed of me. So I couldn't ask her to tutor me either. It's like the whole world was going against me. The district superintendent was visiting our school, and the principal chose the two smartest kids to give a welcome speech, Pearl and a new student, Joe, from my class. So he started to hang out a lot at our home to prepare for the speech. Hey, Ruby, need any help with tomorrow's test? Nah, I am famously unteachable. Don't waste your time on me, and Pearl is waiting for you. It's all right, she can wait. Let me help. Surprisingly, for the first time in my life, I felt like I could actually learn. There was something about the way he taught me that made me absorb knowledge naturally. Like, he understood me and my struggles. Hey, there you are. I've been looking for you. We have a test coming, so I was helping Ruby. And we have a huge speech to give on Thursday. You know nobody actually listens to those speeches, right? Anyway, I trust you to come up with something incredible. Pearl stormed out angrily, but the only thing in my mind then was that I actually could learn. Hey, Joe, please teach me more. Joe could help me learn to get better grades, and then I could finally get back to my team and win the scholarship. Later that night, when I was practicing some test questions Joe gave me, Pearl barged into my room. I am not comfortable with you spending time with my boyfriend alone. Boyfriend? I didn't know you were dating. Well, not yet. Not with you hogging him and not giving me space to charm him. Oh, sorry. I was just excited. Joe is an incredible teacher. I was actually learning. Yeah, right. Of course you're capable of that. Pearl left my room, and it felt like a knife went through my heart. Since when did she think of me like that? Like everyone else does. But she always believed in me. The next day was the speech, and even though I was heartbroken, I still went to support her, and I clapped the loudest after she gave her amazing speech. Thank you for granting us a chance to study here. On behalf of the whole school students, I'll try my best to bring glory to our school's tradition. Wonderful speech, but I think before you bring glory to our school, shouldn't you teach your beloved sister, Ruby Walker, how to read first? I mean, maybe your dummy sister could learn one or two words from you before getting kicked out of her school. <laughs> The whole auditorium burst out laughing, and my rage was filling my body. I lunged at Beth and grabbed her stupid ponytail until she screamed so loud, even the moon could hear her. Teachers and guards tried to separate us, while other students were excitedly shouting and cheering. In the middle of the messy crowd, I saw Pearl look at me in shame. I ran to her, but she just brushed me off. It's you again. Joe isn't enough, and now you try to steal my spotlight as well. What? No, no, I never meant harm to you, I swear. But she didn't listen to me and angrily stormed off. I was so angry at my brain for always failing me and at everyone. Now my dream was gone and my dear sister hated me as well. I fell down on the bleachers and saw Beth wearing my captain's armband gathering everyone to the morning practice. She waved at me with the widest smile. It was hard to fight the tears, so I let them fall. There you are. I was looking for you to continue our classes. I don't think we should continue our classes. Why? Pearl, she doesn't like you and I together and she will hate me for this. Oh, uh, I will talk to her, but this is more important. You need to get back on the pitch. But you're just wasting your time on me. I'm just an idiot who ruined others' lives. No, you're not an idiot at all. You're dyslexic, like me. I've noticed your symptoms for a while, but I wasn't so sure. But I am now. Dyslexia? There's a name for this? So I'm not... I'm not stupid? 
No, you just learn differently. I will help you and teach you all the things the specialists taught me. My mind was fuzzy. I gave Joe a hug without thinking. I felt relief spread all over my body. I wasn't dumb. I was dyslexic. At home that night, I searched everything about dyslexia and even took an online assessment when suddenly Pearl barged in. You told Joe I like him? Um, yes and no, but not like that. Well, thank you so much. He just called to tell me he just considered me a little sister. And you know what? I saw you hugging him on the bleachers this afternoon. So you were going behind my back all this time? What a sister. Don't ever speak to me again. Pearl stormed out and kept her words of never speaking to me. It broke my heart to see us parting like this. Luckily, Joe comforted me and helped me stay focused on studying. Now that I knew what my problem really was and how to fix it, I improved every day. The letters didn't make me dizzy like before anymore, and our effort finally bore fruit, as I got my first B- ever on a test. And in no time, I got called to the principal's office. It has been incredible watching you turn your grades around. Good job, Ruby. I always knew. You're a gem like your name, and you just need some sharpening. Welcome back to the team. <laughs> Thank you! I ran out of his office and rushed to find Joe immediately. We did it! I'm back on the team! Congratulations, but that was all you. You did it, Ruby. That moment would have been perfect if I could celebrate with Pearl. I knew she didn't want to talk to me, but I really wanted to share this with her. But upon seeing me and Joe, she was just shooting me death rays. The joy in my mouth instantly turned to ash. I just wished we could go back to the old good days together. But I had no idea how. <sighs> With me coming back to the team, I reclaimed the captain title and was eligible for the varsity scholarship. And of course, my impressive record easily got me the win. Congratulations to Ruby Walker for winning this year's varsity scholarship. Come on stage. Thank you very much, sir. All I can say is I'm immensely grateful for this chance, and I'm going to try my best. Hi, everyone. Ruby's too shy, so she did prepare a speech here. Good luck. Except that I didn't prepare this note. Everyone in the audience all locked eyes on me, and I was sweating all over when I took the paper from her. Today is trim, trim, um... Oh, our scholarship winner just had a little problem. She just couldn't read. I hope it won't affect the scholarship much, will it? I ran out of the hall before the tears blurred my eyesight. Joe was racing after me, but Pearl caught me first. Pearl, I don't really have time for your mocking now. No, no, I'm sorry. Joe told me about your dyslexia, and you should, you know? Yeah, but it can wait. But you need to go back there right now. You've tried so hard to earn this place. I wouldn't let my sister waste it just because of Beth's dirty move. Joe also nodded encouragingly at me. Pearl was right. It's my passion. It's me or no one who would claim it. So I walked back into the hall, and as soon as I appeared, everyone started to laugh. I stepped up to the mic, took a deep breath, and read the speech. There were still some stumbles and stuttering, but I went through to the last word. Hi, everyone. I'm Ruby. You all can see I have some troubles reading because I have dyslexia. <gasps> all my life, I have struggled and accepted that I was stupid. Until now, I know I'm not. I still haven't figured out how to read big words, but I am not ashamed of my struggles anymore. And no one should bear the troubles I've had. Dyslexic people like me need others to help us, to acknowledge our difficulties, and to be given a chance like any others. We're not dumb. We just need a different way to learn. Thank you. The hall was completely silent for a while before standing up for an ovation. I walked away from the podium to see the scowling look on Beth's face. I went backstage where Pearl gave me a warm hug. I'm so proud of you. And I'm sorry. I should have helped you. But instead, I've been horrible or even cruel to you. Yeah, yeah, you've been forgiven. So now could you please just stay quiet? I just want to hold my little sister longer. I miss this hug. I miss Pearl. My Pearl. It's good to have my sister back. And just like that, my life was back to normal. Uh, of course, with some changes. There is something I need to tell you, Ruby. I'm sorry for the Joe thing. I let jealousy take over me and said bad things to you. But I realized he and I would never become a thing. But you would. Huh? No, we're just friends. Are you? Now come with me. Then she dragged me to the living room where Joe and another boy were standing. Then she placed my hand in Joe's. Joe, could you please take care of my sister when I go out with my boyfriend? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, sure. 
I'm standing in the middle of the room wearing this extravagant dress and a glittery mask. All eyes are on me, but I can sense how ingenuine they are. This is supposed to be my sweet 16th, and yet all of these guests were complete strangers. Ugh, it's all that slimeball Gregory's fault. Actually, this OTT party was all down to him. Oh, hi, I'm Vivian, but my friends call me Viv. My mom, Jacqueline Mars, is one of the wealthiest people on earth. So I grew up thinking massive mansions, gigantic pools, and a floor entirely for toys was the norm. Well, at least I did until I turned 10. That day I was playing in my life-size dollhouse when I heard talking coming from the other side of the fence. I peeked over it and saw a woman and a girl around my age who looked kind of weird. Curious, I spoke up. Hey you, why do you dress so funny? Pardon? What did you say? You don't even have shoes on. That's so silly. You're the silly one. Bet you've never tasted this before, huh? So try it. Spoiled rich kids like you always look down on others. Well, in fact, you're no use to society. I just stood there dumbfounded as the security shooed them away. I never meant to offend her. I, I was just curious. So I rushed inside the house to find mom and ask her about this. Oh, honey. Not anyone can be as wealthy as we are. That means you don't have to worry about a thing, sweet pea. Now go play so mommy can work, okay? Even to this day, mom's words still linger in my ears. I've grown to resent my family's wealth. I just wanted to be a normal kid. That's why, by the time I got to middle school, I convinced mom to let me transfer from my private school to a public one and wipe out everything about me online so no one would know about my influential family. I get the bus to school, buy clothes from thrift shops, and prepare my own lunch instead of bringing the gourmet dish the chefs make for me. A perfect normal life. Until Gregory, mom's so-called boyfriend, showed up. He sticks his big nose in everything. Thanks to him, mom wouldn't stop nagging at me about my clothing, my trashy public school, or how I gotta stop hanging out with the mediocre kids. Ugh, he is driving me insane. And to top it off, he gave mom the idea of throwing me a 16th birthday party. I hate attention. Mom knows this. But what Gregory wants, Gregory gets. This could be an opportunity to introduce her to society and gain new associates. It'd be good for her when she takes over business in the future. Blah, blah, blah. Poof. Please. The only thing that man cares about is himself and his associates. Not mine. In the end, I agreed to a masquerade ball. On one condition. Mom has to stop interfering with who I should or shouldn't hang out with, especially my friends at school. And that brings us to the present. Right when the host announces that it's time for... my first dance? Huh? My what now? Ugh. Gregory! I was confusedly looking around to find a partner when suddenly a hand grabbed me. Birthday girl, come dance with me. Ugh, what a creep. Let go! Can somebody help me with this? Suddenly, a boy around my age appeared. Oh my. He has the most beautiful gray eyes I've ever seen. Excuse me, sir. I believe the lady has agreed to have her first dance with me. Thank you, handsome stranger. As we danced, I couldn't help but stare dreamily into those gorgeous eyes of his. We were about to leave the dance floor when he whispered in my ear. Wait here. I'll be right back. <sighs> Who would have thought a superficial party like this would lead me to my perfect guy? Suddenly, I heard a snapping sound behind me, and as I turned around, my mask fell off. Oh no, a paparazzi cut my mask string. I tried to cover my face with my hands, but it was no use. Luckily, Mum rushed over and hid me behind her. Sorry, everyone, but the party's over. We had a great time and hope to see you all again soon. Then she led me back to my room while the security showed everyone the way out. From that moment on, my ordinary life ended for good. My face was plastered all over the internet as the billionaire Jacqueline Mars's daughter. Now everyone at school is looking at me funny. I don't get it, guys. I'm still the same old Viv. Oh, there my besties are. They would surely have my back, right? But nope. As I approached them, they went ballistic on me saying how I don't trust them enough to confess about my actual background, so from now on we're no longer friends. This is so unfair. I never asked for any of this. I wipe away my tears, trying to act like nothing happened. Huh? 
What's this? There's a note lying on top of my books that says, Hey, it's me, the guy from your birthday party. I'm so sorry for what happened to you. If you need anyone to talk to, text me any time. Oh, so he's from our school? Wow, just when I thought no one's there for me, he showed up again. But there's no name, though. Is he still playing this mysterious game? Okay, I'll just call him my mask tonight, then. From that day on, we texted nonstop. He just gets me. My family situation, my friends, everything. One time, he even secretly slid a black-pink concert ticket in my bag, since I once told him that I was their diehard fan. Another time, he sent me a gift card to my all-time favorite ice cream store, Ben & Jerry's, just to cheer me up on a bad day. Aww. This ice cream tastes delicious, but I can't help wishing the masked knight was here with me. All I know is he has the most beautiful gray eyes and gorgeous black hair. Hmm. Oh, speak of the devil. Hey, I have a surprise for you this Valentine's Day. Hope you're as excited to see me as I am to see you. Finally, I get to meet the boy I'm crazy about. I can't wait. On Valentine's Day, I was in English staring out of the window and thinking about my masked knight. I wonder what he looks like. Ladies, I brought your Valentine's roses. Here you go, Viv. This is it. It's gotta be from him. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a taste of the rose, then come meet me at the pool. X. I quickly unwrapped the candy, popped it into my mouth, then rushed to meet my dream man. Well, where was he? As I tried calling him, the room started to spin. I saw the outline of a blurred black figure, then... Ugh. My head is killing me. Where am I? And whose hand am I holding? Hold on. Those eyes. He must be. Thank goodness you're awake. Uh, are you the one who danced with you at your birthday party? In the flesh. I'm Jeremiah, by the way. I had higher hopes for our first face-to-face -face meeting, but oh well. <laughs> Turns out, he always knew I went to the same school as him, but he was a bit intimidated by my family's influence, so he decided to get to know me via text first. He said the cops had found some sort of sleep-inducing substance in my rose candy. Before I could quiz him anymore on this, Mom barged into the room and hugged me. After making sure I was okay, she turned to Jeremiah and said, You saved my daughter. For that, I can never thank you enough. Please join us for dinner tomorrow night. Jeremiah seemed hesitant at first, but then he nodded in agreement. Hmm. The dinner did not go as planned. Between Mom's blatant interrogating and Gregory's menacing looks, I could sense Jeremiah's discomfort. Then when Jeremiah asked where the restroom was, Gregory insisted on showing him. When Jeremiah returned, he seemed flustered and made his excuses to leave. Gah. What had that annoying Gregory said to him? I quickly followed Jeremiah and apologized, but he just smiled and offered to pick me up for school tomorrow. The cops haven't found the culprit yet, so from now on, I'll be your guardian. How sweet. After that, I hung out with him every day. Great, right? Only, somehow it didn't feel the same as when we were texting. Back then we had a deep connection. Now it was just like two friends hanging out. Oh, and not to mention Olivia, Jer's childhood friend who can't seem to leave him alone for more than two seconds. One time, Jer and I were at the movies together, but guess who coincidentally appeared and plonked herself down next to him? Yep, Olivia. Worse still, with their giggling and popcorn sharing, I felt like the third wheel. I was not having this again. So I just left for home in this random cab parked outside the theater. But bad luck. The driver doesn't know the way. He doesn't even have a phone. And I had to lend him mine for GPS. The guy snatched it out of my hand immediately. Rude. But wait, it was 9 p.m. already. Why did he still have shades on? And even wore a mask? Right then, I realized the car had passed the town's border. Stop! The car suddenly filled with smoke, and the last thing I thought was, he has eyes that were exactly like... Jairs. I woke up finding myself in this old, cobwebby room. Where is this place? And that driver guy? I have to get out of here now. 
Ah! Right at that moment, he came into the room with a smile. Don't you recognize me? Will you have another dance with me? Because I'd love that. What is happening right now? What he just said. Did that mean he's the actual masked knight? Maybe that's why I don't feel connected to Jeremiah. Why did Cher lie to me then? So many questions popped up in my head. Then suddenly I heard a car stop outside. That guy immediately went to check. This could be my chance of escaping. By the time I got downstairs, I saw the driver guy talking to... Jeremiah. So I hid behind the door and watched on. Cameron, just stop this. Getting revenge on our father is one thing, but this is a step too far. Take Viv back to her family now and end this. I know this looks bad, but trust me, I'd never hurt Viv. I didn't mean for her to fall into the pool. That's why I jumped in to save her. But I need her as bait to show the world what that jerk Gregory is like. He doesn't deserve to be her father. <gasps> I muzzled myself in shock. Gregory is their father? And that Cameron guy was the one saving me. Not Jer? Don't you forget who abandoned us when Mom had a close brush with death, then took all our business and properties, even our home, leaving us helpless? That jerk deserves all he gets. I was trying to process it all. When another car arrived, Gregory's. I quickly hid under the stairs before he walked in with a bunch of bodyguards. Cameron, Jeremiah, my sons, haven't you grown up so fast? Cut to the chase. Give us back the business and what's rightfully ours. Then we'll let your stepdaughter go. Huh, <laughs> indeed. Like father, like sons. Very smart. But still amateurs, my boys. You see, all that girl is to me is an obstacle blocking my way to the inheritance. So please, be my guest and take care of that little Miss Annoying. Aren't you afraid we'll expose everything you just said? And who's gonna believe you now? Jacqueline is mesmerized by me so she'd believe anything I say. <laughs> that snake. How dare he speak of my mom like that? Unable to hold in my rage, I jumped out of my hiding spot and screamed at Gregory. What did you say about my mom? You slimy, lying traitor. Nice talking to you all, but the fun has to end here. Goodbye. The guards lunged forward, about to tie me up when... The cops smashed the door coming in, and behind them was... Mom! Stop right there. How dare you do this to my daughter? Gregory's face turned paler than a ghost as he mumbled out, Jackie, honey, why you're here? Um, but just in time to save our baby, Vivian. Cut the act. I already heard everything you said. And you're going to jail for a long time. Then the cops led him and took his crook guards away. Seeing Mom... I was so happy I rushed to hug her. Turns out, her investigations of the pool incident led her to Cameron. So when she confronted him, he eventually told her everything. That's how they came up with a plan to catch Gregory red-handed. Mom and the cops had been waiting in ambush around here for Gregory to show up. Then, well, you know the rest. A lot has happened in three months. Mom finally finished all the legal stuff. So now the property Gregory had merged with hers to gain her trust is now signed back over to Cam and Jeremiah. I realized that being wealthy isn't a bad thing, especially as it means with influence like this, I can help other less fortunate people and really make a difference. Now I help mom with her business and her charity work, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm proud of my hardworking, amazing mom, and I'm proud of who I am. And guess what? I now have real friends who like me for me. As for Jeremiah, well, he apologized about everything. He used to fear his brother was going to hurt me, so he lied to protect me. We made up, of course, and became the best of friends. I'm not sure I can say the same about his brother, though. He did everything he could to beg for my forgiveness, but I just can't. Then one day, Jer asked me to come by his home to visit his mom. She begged me not to think badly of her boys, especially Cameron. He's in love with you, you know? He always talks about you and how he wishes things would have been different. Oh boy, her words are starting to have an effect on me. When I walked out the door, I saw Cameron sitting on the porch. He turned and looked at me and I felt my heart pound for my gray-eyed, masked knight. So, taking a deep breath, 
I walked over to him just as the sun was setting. Oh God, my Roger, look at him. Those chiseled features and dreamy eyes. No wonder every girl swoon at the sight of him. And of course, me, his biggest fan is no exception. <sighs> You're probably wondering how I got into the backstage area of a star actor like Roger, right? It's simple. His makeup artist is Hannah, and she just so happens to be my big sister. Of course, I had to beg her for days to let me tag along. That's why I have to embrace every second of being this close to my celebrity crush. Hey, are you taking pictures of me? Oh no, busted. I was stammering, trying to come up with some excuse, when to my surprise, Roger lifted my phone and took a selfie. Here you go, baby girl. Next time, just ask. Oh my, there's no denying that Roger is boyfriend material. The girls from my class will definitely be turning green once they know this. Oh, he wants some orange juice? No problem, Roger. Just call me your own personal genie. Then I rushed around to find some OJ and hurried backstage to give it to him. But too late, his other fangirls had beat me to it. There were enough juices for him to drink all year round now. Sadly, I turned around to leave, but accidentally bumped into someone. Holy moly, it's Roger! He smiled at me and looked down at the cup of fresh orange juice in my hands. May I borrow your OJ? This is my number if you need it. What does this mean? Have I, an ordinary girl, caught the eye of the hottest guy on the planet? Ouch! This is clearly not a dream. For the rest of the evening, I tried composing the perfect message to him. Ugh, why was it so hard? I must have typed and deleted it at least 100 times. Oh no! I just pressed the send button by accident. Before I could remove that message, he already replied. That's it. There's no turning back now. I tried to calm myself down and went with the flow, which then led us to hours of long conversation. And soon, we were talking every day. One day, out of the blue, he said he wanted us to have a private date. Does that mean our relationship has moved on to the next level? <coughs> our first date was at this low-key diner with very few customers. I disguised myself just like what Roger told me to and waited for him. <sighs> but it's been an hour in vain. Did he really stand me up? I glumly got up to leave when a sweaty, out-of-breath Roger appeared. Turns out he struggled to lose his security guards just to come and see me. Aw, it's so sweet that he went to all this effort for a normal girl like me. No need for a fancy restaurant nor extravagant gifts. This diner was already the most romantic as I had a real gentleman right here. Don't wake me up from this dream ever. Then, before we parted, he gently put a daisy bracelet on my wrist. Dating in secret is pretty exciting, right babe? Oh boy, this proved that I was no longer just a mere fangirl having a crush on her idol. Yep, we were officially dating in secret. The next day, I arrived at school in the best mood ever. I was singing on the way to class when my friend Alba startled me. Hey, have you watched the new trailer for Roger's upcoming film? It's dope. I booked a ticket for the sneak show already. <sighs> that's nothing. I already got a slot at the movie premiere. Jealous much? Huh, <laughs> that's the power of a fan club's vice president. And for me, I just had the most romantic dinner date ever with Roger. Oh, of course, that's only what I wish I could say. In fact, I could just smile and then head on to my seat. <sighs> Keeping this secret is driving me crazy. But I guess dating an idol comes with a price, and I don't mind paying for it my whole life. <laughs> but okay, on top of all the secrecy, as you'll know, celebrities are always occupied, having no private time left. So we have to come up with inventive ways to get some alone time. Finally, Hannah had left. Let's see, hair, makeup, clothes, everything was perfect. No one seemed around. Now I needed to hurry to Roger's fan. Hey Hannah, why are you still here? Wow, look at you, all dressed up, huh? What's the occasion? <laughs> oh, um, I just forgot my stuff. See ya. And then I rushed behind the vanity van. Phew, so close.
It's a good thing I look a lot like my sister and have picked up some great makeup tips from her, so it's a piece of cake for me to pretend to be Hannah and sneak into the filming site. <laughs> Let me see if you're my adorable Harper. While praising my excellent disguise, Roger suddenly went silent. Then he turned into a completely different person. His attitude changed. He pushed me away, poured his coffee onto his shoes, and started yelling at me. What on earth are you doing? Do you know how much these cost? Clean them! What just happened? I reached my arm out and asked if I'd upset him, but a woman swung my hand away. Take your filthy hand off my son! Oh, it's Roger's mom, Mrs. Walker, the chairwoman of the film production company, known by the entire industry for being a bossy lady who always caused others difficulties. Worse still, the buzzing sound outside also started growing louder. Oh no, I better not cause any trouble here. So I kept my gaze at the ground and frantically apologized. Suddenly, a hand grabbed my arm and pulled me away. It was Danielle, Roger's manager. Don't be bothered too much if he acted a little off. It was just too stressed from work. I'm Roger's older sister, by the way. But we were super close, so I understand him better than anyone. OMG, I didn't know he had an older sister. <laughs> But I know about you. Every time he sees you, his eyes fill with happiness. It's kind of obvious. Oh, um, we... You don't have to say anything. I'll keep your love story a secret. It turned out that Danielle knew everything and didn't say a word because she knew it would embarrass us. After that, she drove me home and we exchanged numbers. Roger wasn't being very responsive, so it was nice having Danielle to talk to, as she was very supportive of our relationship and kept me up to date with the schedule. A whole week has passed since that day with no reply from Roger. Nothing. Not a single phone call. I also texted his new phone number that Danielle gave me, but still zilch. Sometimes, I don't know if I really have a boyfriend or not. I just want to experience what other couples have. <sighs> Stop wasting your time fantasizing about a guy far out of your league. It's so tragic. Especially now he has a girlfriend. He's totally betrayed us. What did she just say? Girlfriend? I hurriedly went online and saw a photo of Roger and Jessica, a hot singer, looking cozy backstage. So he was ghosting me to be with her? My heart felt like it was going to burst into flames. I immediately texted Danielle and she replied straight back, complaining that she was also having a headache with Jess's dirty PR tricks to promote her new album. Oh, phew. So it's just a silly rumor. What a relief. Besides, for the past few days, Roger hadn't contacted me at all because he'd been busy filming a new movie in Paris. He would be back soon and he was gonna hold a small meet and greet downtown. Danielle suggested I should show up and surprise him, and she even cleared up Roger's schedule that day so we could go on a date after the event. <coughs> Wonderful, Danielle! That day, I went to the meet and greet and disguised myself so perfectly that Roger wouldn't recognize me. He would be so surprised to see me here. To be honest, I don't like my man doing all those kinds of air kisses or hugs with fans, but, well... That's his job, and I should be understanding. Besides, I used to fall for these sweet gestures as a fan too. Roger, are any of these dating rumors true? Well, I just thought, you know, I'm better off focusing on my work and you guys. You're my true supporters, unlike all the girls out there who only approach me for fame and money. What does he mean? So he just sees me as one of those cloud-chasing girls out there? I seemed to be out of breath among the excited howls of his fans, and I couldn't stay here much longer. I was sobbing as I ran outside, thinking about how Roger actually thought of me, of us, all this time. Suddenly, a car stopped in front of me. It was Danielle. I know it's hard being in love with a celebrity, but from a fan's perspective, that's something they want to hear from him. Of course, he can't speak up about his real relationship, but you can. You mean, there's nothing wrong with your love, and we have plenty of other ways to express it discreetly, right? What Danielle said got me thinking. Sophie teases me every day for dreaming about dating my idol, but this relationship is real, and I have the right to show off my love, right? 
So I posted my favorite picture from one of our dates on Instagram as a way to pour my heart out. The next morning, I woke up to see an angry text from Roger. Harper, why did you break our promise? Why did you disclose our relationship? Things are a mess now. Underneath, it was the link to a tweet along with the title, Young actor Roger is suspected of dating someone 10 years his senior. Oh no 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 no, how did they find my photo that quickly? And worse, they must have mistaken the person in the picture to be my sister, Hannah. Well, at least my sister is on vacation, so she hasn't found out about this yet. I must fix this before she comes back, or else she's gonna kill me. I tried to contact both Roger and Danielle, but got no response. What to do? Ah, Roger is having a press conference for his new movie. I'll go there and talk to him directly. I used Hannah's pass card to rush backstage in the hope Roger would be there, but... Wait, there's only Mrs. Walker and her staff. You better clean up this scandal immediately. Don't let it affect the conference. So annoying. That makeup artist must be using some tricks to take advantage of Roger. Now she will know what it's like to have her career ruined. Oh no, I can't let that happen. Please don't do this. It's not Hannah in the picture. It was me, her sister. Roger and I are in love. <laughs> I never said I loved you, so stop making a fool of yourself. Sorry, Mom. I was just playing around with her because I was bored. Let me handle this. What? I thought he was different. Turns out he's just another jerk who uses fame to flirt with girls. We're over! I shouted then sprinted out of there. For days after that, more Twitter videos were posted from Roger's alleged staff claiming he was arrogant and rude. It serves him right, I guess. However, I began to wonder about the fact that there weren't a lot of people there at those moments. Who could have been the one taking those videos? Suddenly, a Twitter notification popped up and brought me back to reality. Wait, it's that account, isn't it? The fans were still furious with Roger. Scrolling through the articles about him, I saw a bunch of comments telling everyone to cancel him. They even shared a picture of Roger going to bars and getting drunk the night before his apology press conference. Even though I was mad at him, I couldn't just switch off my feelings. So I took an Uber to the bar to find Roger, but because of my age, the security guard stopped me. As I was trying to find a way to sneak inside, I saw a familiar figure. It was Roger, sitting on the steps of the bar's back door. Hey, you alright? I'll call Danielle to come pick you up. No, please. I'm too tired of having bodyguards and a manager follow me 24-7. I just want to be alone now. Harper, I'm sorry for hurting you all this time. I just want to say, it was real. I really do love you. I did what I did because I was so worried that my adoptive mom would harm you if she knew about us. Your adoptive mom? Yeah, I'm not Mrs. Walker's biological son. She recognized my acting talent, so she adopted me when I was 11. Since then, I've been nothing more than a money-making machine to her. He then told me how his pure passion for acting was starting to be worn out by all these pressures of being a celebrity, especially now that he knew someone was behind all the recent scandals. I know who's behind it all, so do show up at the press conference as planned and I'll take care of the rest. I waited for Roger to finish his apology for all the scandals, then I went up to address the crowd. All of the rumors are fake. I know this because I'm the girl from the video. And the person who filmed and edited it to make it look bad was his manager, Danielle. I pointed to her and amidst the gasps, all eyes and cameras shifted to her. Wh what This is slander. You have no proof. Then I held up my phone and played a video recording of Sophie admitting that Danielle was giving her the videos to upload on the internet. Actually, on the presentation day, Sophie accidentally revealed her secret Twitter account, which was none other than at Cancel Roger, the one of the so-called staff. So I confronted her right away and told her that she could be sued for defaming others. When I first heard the rumor about Roger having a girlfriend, I was blinded by jealousy so I listened to Danielle. Given that she's his manager, how could I not believe that those videos were true? As his fan club vice president, I had my members' best interests at heart, so please, don't sue me. Fine, it was me. So what? 
I need to show mom that Roger is not as special as she thinks she is. I knew Roger liked Harper, so I approached her and used the relationship to ruin his career. Then mom would finally notice me. Whoa, what a twist, right? So what now? Well, Mrs. Walker and Daniel's true intentions were exposed for all to see. This cleared Roger of all the scandals and his fans are all back together to support him again. He has a new manager now and they have no problem with him publicly dating me. Oh, and as for Hannah, arriving back from her trip to discover she'd been dating one of her celebrity clients didn't go down too well with her. <laughs> But it's not all bad, since she now has loads of bookings after this scandal. So if anything, she has me to thank for being more in demand than ever. 